Oh, please. Okay, um, so we're gonna go over the piece of dedication. Okay, oh, please, to the both side. Okay, so, mm, where do I begin? Hey, I have a lot of notes here that I, wanna, I wanted to go over. But if you want to get more details on the Feast of Dedication class, you can just go to the YouTube channel, okay? You'll find more information on that class. But I do want to touch on things, okay? Watch this. Give me Serac. Let's open up with that. Serac 39 verse 1. Let's open up with the book of Ecclesiasticus, okay? Chapter 39 verse 1. Let's start there. Okay? Open to the most uh, God. Okay, read it. Sarah 39, verse 1. Let's start there. Come on. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 39, verse 1. Read. But he that giveth his, his mind to the law of the Most High. Come on. And is occupied in the meditation thereof. So if you give your mind to the laws of the Most High God, then you must be occupied in what? In the what? In the meditation thereof. So God is commanding us that we must meditate on God's laws. We must not meditate on our feelings. We must meditate on God's commandments. Okay? Go ahead. We will seek out the wisdom of all the ancients. You see that? When you give your mind to the laws of the Most High God, you're going to seek out the what? You're going you're gonna to seek out the what? We will seek out the wisdom of all the ancients. You're going to seek out the wisdom of all the ancients. The ancients talk about our forefathers that came before us. Those are the wisdom of the ancients. That's the wisdom of the ancients. Go ahead. And be occupied in prophecy. And we are going to be occupied in prophecy. So today, we're going to go over some prophecies regarding the Feast of the Dedication. Okay? We're going to go over that. Watch this. Come on, keep reading. He will keep the sayings of the renowned men. He will keep, he says, this man, this sister, you understand? He says, the one that what? The one that uh, give his mind to the Lord, the most High God, he says, they will keep the sayings of renowned men. You understand? Famous men. Our forefathers that came before us, because those were famous men. Go ahead. And where subtle parables are, uh -huh. he, will, he will be there also. You will see subtle parables in the scriptures because only the Lord can open your understanding to see that. When you don't keep God's commandments, guess what? You're not going to see those subtle parables. Okay? The Lord will make you think that you see something when you don't. Go ahead. He will seek out the secrets of grave sentences. The secrets of grave sentences goes into what? The dark sayings, the parables. You understand? The wise sayings of our forefathers. Read. And be conversant in dark parables. And be conversant in dark parables. Okay? Read that again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 39, verse 3. Go ahead. He will seek out the secrets of grave sentences. Read. And be conversant in dark parables. And he's going to be conversant in dark parables. Now watch this. Give me the book. Give me Psalms 119 verse 18. Okay, Psalms 119 verse 18. Okay, this is our prophet King David, the mighty prophet he was. Okay, he was, he was a mighty prophet indeed. Okay, and our prophet King David meditated on God's words. Read them. Psalms 119 verse 18. Come on. Psalms chapter 119 verse 18. Read. Open thou mine eyes, mm -hmm. that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Only the most high God can open your spiritual eyes to see the wondrous things that are hidden in God's laws. Okay? When you give your mind to God's commandments, the most high God says, I'm going to open your eyes. I'm going to give you the spirit of what? The spirit to have sense. Read again. Verse 18. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 18. Read. Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. So when, when the, oh, the most high God is the only one that can do that. When you do his will, when you apply his commandments, you follow cancer, he says, I'm going to open your eyes. I'm going to open your spiritual eyes. Okay? Now watch this. Give me the book of Daniel 12, verse 4. Daniel, chapter 12, verse 4. Okay? Because our forefather Daniel, the Lord... The Most High God did bless him with great wisdom, okay? He blessed him with great wisdom, and he showed Daniel certain things that were not open, that were not open for everyone to understand. But you needed to be in God's commandments for you to be able to understand the visions that are written therein. Read that. Daniel 12, verse 4. Come on. The book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 4. Read. But thou, O Daniel, uh -huh. shut up the words. Read. And seal the book. And do what? And seal the book. And seal the book. Meaning seal the understanding that is in this book. The Lord is commanding Daniel. Come on. Even to the time of the end. Even to the time of the end. Meaning it's going to come a time in these last days that the seal, are, the seal is going to be opened. 
where we will understand what this Bible is saying. Right? Many shall run to and fro. Many shall run to and fro, read. And knowledge shall be increased. The knowledge that will be increased of this earth is talking about the knowledge of the white man, his science, okay? His uh, his tablets, his his touch screens, okay, his technological advances. Okay, we watch this. There's a series called Fringe. Fringe, they go into some a lot of paranormal stuff. Okay, they go over a lot of history, they go over a lot of science. A lot of you think it's science fiction, but there's a lot of stuff in there that Isu is busy doing that Isu has achieved thus far. You understand, in preparation for the Messiah. Okay, understand that, but that, that that's his knowledge that will be increased. Okay, but the knowledge of the Lord also will what will increase. That's why now Israel is waking up. Okay, we're letting you know that the Lord is opening up the understanding of this book to understand prophecies and dark saints. Give me that to Revelation 5 and 5. Watch this because Christ is the one that will open the seal on the book. Okay, read that Revelation 5, verse 5. Come on. The book of Revelation, chapter 5, verse 5. Read. And one of the elders said unto me, uh -huh. Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. The lion of the tribe of Judah, that's Jesus the Christ, come on. The root of David uh -huh. had prevailed to open the book. They had what? Had, had prevailed to open the book. Had prevailed to open the book because Christ is the only one that is worthy to open to the understanding unto us. Not man, okay? But the Spirit of Christ, which will be in the prophets, will allow us to understand what this Bible is saying. To open the seals on the book. Read that again. Verse 5. The book of Revelation, chapter 5, verse 5. Come on. And one of the elders said unto me, Read. Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. The lion of the tribe of Judah, that's Jesus the Christ. Come on. The root of David. Read. Have prevailed to open the book. Come on. And to loose the seven seals thereof. And to loose the seven seals thereof. You understand? The only way, the only reason why we are able to open up the Bible and understand what he's saying is because Christ is the one that is opening our spiritual eyes to understand this thing. To see what the scriptures are saying, to also understand how to apply it. Okay? Watch this. Give me Hosea 12 and 10. Hosea chapter 12 and verse 10. I'm going to be rushing through this class, so bear with me. Okay? Hosea 12 verse 10. Okay, if I'm rushing, just look at the recording. Okay? Hosea 12 verse 10. Read what you got? The book of Hosea, chapter 12, verse 10. Come on. I have also spoken by the prophets. I have spoken by the prophets back then in the days of old and also in these last days. Read. And I have multiplied visions. I have multiplied visions. Read on. And used similitude uh -huh. by the ministry of the prophets. A lot of the things that are written in the Bible, they are written in similitude, parables, dark sayings. It's not straightforward. You understand? It's not straightforward to the simple. To the simple, it's not going to be straightforward. Why? Because the most said God is to make sure that you keep his commandments, you do what this Bible says to. If you don't, the Lord will hide it from you. Okay? Read again, verse 10. Come on. The book of Hosea, chapter 12, verse 10. Read. I have also spoken by the prophets. Come on. And I have multiplied, and I have multiplied visions. Read. And used symmetry uh -huh. by the ministry of the prophets. By the ministry of the prophets. Because the prophets will do what? Will minister unto the people. They will bring the truth to the people so the people understand what this Bible is saying. So that what, what we need to do in these last days to prepare for the second coming of Christ. Okay, give me that in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 12. But because Christ has what has prevailed to open the seal on the book, the understanding, watch this. Give me that. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 12. 2 Book of Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 12. Great. Seeing then that we have such hope, uh -huh. we use great plainness of speech. We do what? We use great plainness of speech. We use great plainness of speech. So there's certain things that the Lord will open up to us and the, it, the Lord will make it plain for us to understand. But he will, he will reveal to the prophets in parables and dark things and visions. You understand? But he used other prophets to use plainness of speech. That we understand. So we understand the parables. Watch this. Given the book of Daniel chapter 8 verse 1, we went over this, but there's certain things I want to touch on. Okay? Daniel 8 verse 1. Read that. The book of Daniel, chapter 8, verse 1. Read. In the third year of the reign of King 
Belshazzar. Belshazzar. Come on. A vision appeared unto me, mm -hmm. even unto Daniel. Even I'm, unto me, Daniel. Even unto me. Even unto me, Daniel. Go ahead. After that appeared unto me at the first. Now, Belshazzar is Nebuchadnezzar's grandson. Okay? Belshazzar is Nebuchadnezzar's grandson. Watch this. Give me the book of Daniel 5 and 1 real quick. Daniel 5, verse 1. The book of Daniel, chapter 5, verse 1. Read. Belshazzar, the king, made a great feast uh -huh. to a thousand of his lords. Read. And drank wine before the thousand. So now Belshazzar, he made a great feast. You understand? And while he made a great feast, he started to speak what? He started to speak evil of what? Of the most high. They stopped the, the, the words that the Lord did. Because the reason why he was ruling is because the Lord said him up. Watch this. Give me Daniel 4. Okay. Daniel chapter 4, verse 17. Watch this. Daniel 4, verse 17. Like you see today, look at uh, Joe Biden. Joe Biden, I mean, he, he shouldn't be in office. He's about to drop dead. But guess what? He's the president of the free world. Okay, watch this. Daniel 4, verse 17. Read that. The book of Daniel, chapter 4, verse 17. Read. This matter is by the decree of the watchers. Uh -huh. And the and the demand by the word of the holy ones. Read. To the intent uh -huh. that the living may know. That the living may know. That those that are on earth may know. May know what? Come on. That the most high ruled in the kingdom of men. You see that? That the most high ruled in the kingdom of men. The context of this chapter now we're talking about who? Belshazzar. Okay, come on. And set it up over it the basis of men. You see that? Read on. This dream. No, no, no. Read that part again and give it into whom, whomsoever. I need to uh, read that part. I think you skip that. And give it to whomsoever he will. Uh -huh. And set it up over it the, the basis, basis of men. men. Belshazzar. Okay, watch this. Give me Tobit 14 verse 15. Tobit. Okay. Because Belshazzar is Nebuchadnezzar's grandson. Okay. Belshazzar. So I'm just giving you a little bit of history because when we were going over the media empire, I touched on this thing. So those of you brothers and sisters that have those notes, okay, you can go back and refer to that. Okay, read that, Tobit 14, verse 15. Read that. The book of Tobit, chapter 14, verse 15. Read. But before he died, he heard of the destruction of Nineveh, uh -huh. which was taken by Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, go ahead. And, and Asaras, and before his death, he rejoiced over Nineveh. Because Tobit, our forefather, was in which captivity? Which captivity? Assyrians. He was in the Assyrian Empire. So now, what's going on here, because the Assyria, Nineveh was the capital. Okay? Nineveh was the capital of Assyria. So now, guess what's going on here? Nineveh is being overthrown. Who's taking over? Babylon. So the king that took over, okay, is Nabopolesa. Okay? Nabopolesa. Nabopolesa. That's Nebuchadnezzar the first, if you will. Okay? Nabopolesa. This writer is the grandfather of Belshazzar. Okay? This is the grandfather of Belshazzar. It was around 626 BC. So write that down. Okay, 626 BC. Give me Daniel 4 verse 1. The book of Daniel chapter 4 verse 1. Go ahead. Nebuchadnezzar the king mm -hmm. unto all people nations and languages Ray. that dwell in all the earth. Uh -huh. Peace be multiplied unto you. Peace be multiplied unto you. So this Nebuchadnezzar is Nebuchadnezzar the second. Okay? This is Nebuchadnezzar the second. And this one, this Nebuchadnezzar right here, is the one that he was what? Was more powerful. Nebuchadnezzar the second. You understand? Now, watch this. The year was around 606 BC. So write that down. 606 BC. This is Nebuchadnezzar the second. So go back to Daniel now, 8 verse 1. The book of Daniel, chapter 8 verse 1. Read. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar. Belshazzar. So this is what? This is who? Nebuchadnezzar's grandson. You've got Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar II, you've got Belshazzar. Read. A vision appeared unto me. Mm -hmm. Even unto me, Daniel. Come on. After that, which appeared unto me at the first. So now remember, what we read in Hosea 12, the Lord says, He'll speak what? He'll speak to the prophets through what? 
seemingly chosen visions, right? Okay, so that's what's going on. Daniel now, the Lord is revealing up to him those simply truths and visions. Later on, verse 2, come on. And I saw in a vision, mm -hmm. and it came to pass when I saw Great. that I was at Shushan in the palace, mm -hmm. which is in the province of Elam. So, Shushan the palace, that's where? That's East India. That's India. Okay, Shushan the palace. Give me Esther 1 and 1. Esther, chapter 1, verse 1. Just to get a little bit of information on this. Okay. He says he was in Shushan in Elam. Okay. Watch this. Esther chapter 1, verse 1. The book of Esther chapter 1, verse 1. Come on. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus. Ahasuerus, that's Xerxes. Read. This is Ahasuerus which reigned from India. From what? From India. From India, come on. Even to Ethiopia. Even unto Ethiopia. Read. Over a hundred and seven and twenty provinces. So 127 provinces from India even unto Ethiopia, right? Read on. That in those days mm -hmm. when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, Read. which was in Shushan. Which was in what? Which was in Shushan. Which was in Shushan. That's in Elam. Okay? That's what that's the place that Daniel is making reference to. Okay? Read that part again. Which was in what? Which was in Shushan. Which was in Shushan. Read. The palace. Now go back. Okay. Give me Daniel 8 verse 15 real quick. Daniel 8 verse 15. Remember, the Lord is revealed, giving Daniel a vision. At this point, Daniel didn't understand what he was being revealed unto him. You understand? Watch this. Um, Daniel 8 read verse 15. The book of Daniel chapter 8 verse 15. Read. And it came to pass uh -huh. when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision. Now Daniel is going to be explained the vision, and the vision is going to be expanded unto Daniel. Keep reading. Come on. And sought for the meaning. Uh -huh. Then behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. Come on. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of, of life. You lie. The banks of you lie. The one that we read in verse 2. Come on. And I heard a voice. And I had a man's voice between the banks of Ulai, mm -hmm. which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. So the Lord sent the angel Gabriel to reveal the vision unto Daniel, so Daniel can understand what's going on here. Read. So he came near where I stood, uh -huh. and when he came, I was afraid. Come on. And I fell upon my, upon my face. Read. But he said unto me, Come on. Understand, O son of man, mm -hmm. for at the time of the end shall the vision shall be the vision. For at the what? For at the time of the end mm -hmm. shall be the vision. So the vision at the time of the end, meaning what? Because remember Daniel, if you read Daniel 7, the Lord is showing Daniel all the empires that will come to pass, even unto the time of the end. The last, the fourth empire, which will be the last empire that will be ruling in the last days. That's what the angel is saying to Daniel here. Okay? These are certain parables going on. Come on. Now as he was speaking with me, mm -hmm. I was in a deep sleep on my face toward the ground. Wait. But he touched me mm -hmm. and set me up. So now he's going to expand out to Daniel what's going on. Now watch this. Daniel, now go back to Daniel, Daniel 8 now. Read verse 3. The book of Daniel chapter 8 verse 3. Now the, the, the vision, because the, the Lord is going to use the angel to explain unto Daniel what the vision means. But now we're going to go over the vision. Go ahead. Verse 3. The book of Daniel chapter 8 verse 3. Come on. Then I lifted up my eyes and saw, mm -hmm. and behold, they stood before a they stood before the river, a ram which had two horns, uh -huh. and the two horns were high. Come on, but one was higher than the other. Read, and the higher came up loud. So now Daniel is seeing a vision of a ram, the ram that has two horns, okay, and one horn was higher than the other. He says the higher horn came up last, which represents empires that will come. Okay, come on. I saw the ram pushing westward mm -hmm. and northward Ray. and southward. Come on. So that no beasts might stand before him. Okay, read that part again, verse 4. The book of Daniel, chapter, chapter 8, verse 4. Mm -hmm. I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward. So that no beasts might stand before him. So now at this point, Persia is conquering the nations, he's conquering the nations round about him. Okay? When he says you see that part it says, I saw the ram pushing westward, northward, and southward. So all these nations here, it goes into it goes into Greece, it goes into Egypt, okay? 
it also goes into there's another one mm. it will come to me but the the northward one and the southward one goes into the south one that's egypt okay the northward one that right there is greece okay i remember the westward one just remind me of that we know neither was the was the enemy that could deliver out of his hand we? but he did according to his will uh -huh. and became great so now this realm is represented what who is this realm jump down to verse 20 okay let's see who's the realm that has two horns that was conquered come on the book of daniel chapter 8 verse 20 we? the realm which thou sawest having two horns mm -hmm. are the kings of media and persia so now daniel remember daniel is seeing this vision during whose reign belshazzar don't forget the thought now because Daniel is seeing something that has not happened yet. Okay? This is during the time of Belshazzar. In his third year of his reign. Okay? Persia has not come to pass yet. Okay? Read again. The book of Daniel, chapter 8, verse 20. Read. The ram which thou sawest, having two horns, are the kings of Media and Persia. So now we see the Persian, the Media and the Persian Empire coming into power. But not yet. Okay? Now, keep reading. Um, no, go back. Read verse 5. Again. The book of Daniel, chapter 8, verse 5. Read. And I was considering. Mm. Behold, and, as, and as I was considering. Come on. The book of Daniel, chapter 8, verse 5. Read. And as I was considering. What was he considering? The vision he just saw of the realm that has two horns. Read. Behold, and he goat came from, from the west. A he goat came from the west. Come on. And he goat came from the west mm -hmm. on the face of the whole earth Wait. and touched on the ground. And touched not the ground. What Bible are you reading? Is that that other version again? Read that verse again. The book of Daniel chapter 8 verse 5. Wait. And I was considered, and as I was considered, mm -hmm. behold, and he goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth Wait. and touched not the ground. Come on. And the goat had, had a notable horn between his, his eyes. So now, now he's seeing a goat. After he just he was considering the ram that has two horns, now he's seeing the goat. Okay, this goat was powerful. He says, you are so powerful that he couldn't, he was so powerful that he did not touch the ground. Meaning that's how, how, how much there was, there was conquering. The Lord gave this goat power. And the, is what, is a, and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. Okay, read on verse 6. And he came to the ram that had two horns, Wait. which I had seen standing before the river, mm -hmm. and ran unto him in the fury of his power. In the what? In the fury of his power. So now, when the goat came on the scene, the goat did not come as a nice person on the scene. You understand? He did not come as a nice person on the scene. He's also letting you know how powerful the goat was. Because the goat was able to conquer this, two, this dual empire by itself. That's letting you know how powerful this goat was. Okay, who's the goat? Read verse 21. We've gone through this, so I'm just rushing through it. There's something I want to deal with in the chapter. Go ahead. The book of Daniel chapter 8, verse 21. Read. And the rough goat is the king of Greece. The what? And the rough goat mm -hmm. is the king of Greece. The rough goat. You see that word right there? The rough goat. That's why it says what? It says what? It says, and ran unto him in the fury of his power. So he didn't come on the scene as a nice person. Okay? They were conquering and they had fury. Okay? Read again, verse 21. The book of Daniel, chapter 8, verse 21. Read. And the rough goat is the king of Grecia. The rough goat is the king of Grecia. Go ahead. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. So the horn that is between the eyes of the goat is the first king of Grecia. Go back to 2 Corinthians 3 verse 12. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 12. So we understand what the Apostle Paul was saying right there. Okay. 2 book of Corinthians chapter 3 verse 12. Read. So then death worketh in no, us. No, no, no. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 12. 2 book of Corinthians chapter 3 verse 12. Read. Seeing then that we have such hope. We have such hope in who? In Christ. The one that prevailed to open the seal. Read. We use great plainness of speech. We use great plainness of speech. What we read in Daniel, that's not plainness of speech. Okay? Now give me that in first Maccabees 1 and 1. So we can understand that plainness of speech that is written in the book of the Maccabees. Okay? 
Mm. First book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 1. Mm. And it happened mm -hmm. after that Alexander, son of Philip, mm. the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Shittim, mm -hmm. had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and Medes, mm. that he reigned in his day, mm -hmm. the first over Greece. The first, the first over Greece. So this is the great plainness of speech. In the book of Daniel 8, that's not plainness of speech, okay? That's similitudes, okay? That's why he's using symbols here to explain the empires that will rise one after another. In Daniel 7, he's using different symbols also, okay? Let's go back. Daniel chapter 8. Daniel 8, read verse 7. The book of Daniel chapter 8, verse 7. Read. And I saw him come close unto the wall, mm -hmm. and he was moved with color against him. And with what? With color. Meaning great anger. Read again. The book of Daniel chapter 8 verse 7. Read. And I saw him come close unto, uh, come close unto the land. Read. And he was moved with color against he him. He was moved with color against the land. Read on. And smote the land. He smote the land, conquered it. Come on. And break his two horns. Meaning what? That dual empire was overthrown. Read. And there was no power in the land to stand before him. Meaning what? They had to be conquered and overthrown, as according to what Daniel said. Read. But he cast him down to the ground mm -hmm. and stamped upon him. You see that thing? He cast him down to the ground, guess what? And stamped upon him. What does that mean? Give me that in Isaiah. I'm going to give, I'm going to give you an example of what that means. Okay? And stamped upon him. Watch this. Isaiah 51. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 51 and verse 23. Watch this. Now this goes into Islam. Okay? What the nations did to us back then and what the nations are doing to us today. Especially today. Read it. Verse 23. Come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 51, verse 23. Read. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee. Read. Which have said to thy soul. Come on. Bow down. Bow down. Which have said to thy soul, bow down. Meaning what? Yes, they, they ran upon them and they stepped upon them. They made sure that anything about their culture and so forth was destroyed too. They may make sure that they were assimilated into Greek culture. That's what Alexander did when he was conquering the dark nations. Okay? Yes, he was, he was going around stealing their culture, but he made sure, okay, I'm going to make one. But all your cultures, you must let it go. That's why Antiochus later on, what did he do? He pushed that thing to the forefront. Okay? Alexander was just playing games, although he conquered. But the reason why he did this to the Persians, because the Persians, what did the Persians have? The Persians had, you can celebrate your custom in our kingdom. You can come with your custom in our kingdom. And you can continue. That's why we were able to celebrate pure How were we able to do that? Because of the way in which Persian media was set up, they allowed us to celebrate our customs. We still knew that we were Isa. But when Alexander showed up on the scene, said, no, 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 we're not doing that. Okay? We're going to assimilate you into our culture. We are not coming with, our, with your culture into our kingdom. That's what they did. Okay? Read that again, verse 23. The book of Isaiah, chapter 51, verse 23. Read. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict me. Read. Which have said to thy soul, Read. Bow down. Bow down, come on. That we may go over. That we may go over. We may walk all over him, trample upon you. Read. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground. That's exactly what Alexander did to the Persians. You understand? That's what America did to us in these last days. Read. And as the street to them that went over. Okay, let's go back. Daniel 8, verse 7 again. The book of Daniel, chapter 8, verse 7. Read. And I saw him come close unto the land. Read. And he was moved with color against him. Uh -huh. And smote the land. He smote the land, come on. And break his two horns. He break his two horns, meaning that dual empire that they had, he said, no, not to hell with them. Read. And there was no power in the land to stand before him. Because mm -hmm. they, they were overthrown and conquered. Read. But he cast him down to the ground. Meaning what? That was not enough that they conquered them. He said, no, we have to assimilate you also. So it wasn't enough. Read. And stamped upon him. Mm -hmm. And there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. And there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. Why? Because everybody was afraid of Alexander. 
Okay, give me first Maccabees chapter 1, verse 2 now. Here's what it means, that there was none that could deliver the realm out of the goat's hand. What did Alexander do? Read that. First Maccabees 1, verse 2. We're going to read 2 and 3. First book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 2. Come on. And made many wars, mm -hmm. and many... And won. And won many strongholds. And won many strongholds, meaning what? He was conquering the dark nations. Read. And slew the kings of the earth. He slew the kings of the earth, okay? That's why one of those kings that he slew was who? Darius the third. Darius the third. Okay, come on. And went through to the ends of the earth uh -huh. and took spoils of many nations. You see that? He took spoils of many nations. Because remember, at this point, Alexander is coming into power. Okay, he's conquering the dark nations, including the Israelites. Right? In so much that the earth was quiet before him. Read. Whereupon he was exalted uh -huh. and his heart was lifted up. He was powerful. That's why it says that nobody could deliver the realm out of his hand. Not only just, he not only did he conquer the realm, but he conquered all the other nations. You understand? That's what Alexander did. Egypt and so forth. Okay, he did that. Okay, let's go back. Okay, Daniel 8 verse 8. The book of Daniel chapter 8 verse 8. Read. Therefore then he go to what's very great. He was very great, meaning he became more powerful. Read. And when he was strong, mm -hmm. the great horn was broken. Stop right there. So Alexander became powerful, okay, because that's the he goat. Okay, he says when he was strong, the great horn was broken. So we went on, we touched on this. Give me that in the first Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 4. Okay, in the book of the Maccabees, you see the great plainness of speech. In Daniel, it's in parables. Okay, come on. First book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 4. Read. And he gathered a mighty strong host. Read. And ruled over countries uh -huh. and nations and come kings. On. Read. Who became tributaries unto him. Come on. And after these things, he fell sick. He fell sick, his great horn was broken. Read. And perceived that he should die. He knew that he was going to die. Come on. Wherefore, he called his servants, mm -hmm. which as were honorable and had been brought up with him from his youth right. and parted his kingdom among them mm -hmm. while he was yet alive. Stop right there. Let's go back to Daniel 8, verse 8, once again. The book of Daniel, chapter 8, verse 8. Right. Therefore, the he goat waxed very great, mm -hmm. and when he was strong, the great horn was broken. Right. And when he perceived that he should die, come on. And for it came up four notable ones. What? And for it came up four notable ones. So these four notable ones, that's what we just read in First Maccabees 1 verse 6. When he says, wherefore he called his servants, that's the four notable ones. Alexander's four generals. Come on. Toward the four winds of heaven. Toward the four winds of heaven, right? And out of one of them came four came forth a little one. A little one. And out and out of one of them came forth a little horn, mm -hmm. which was exceeding great toward the south, and toward the east, and toward the pleasant land. So now, watch this. Now, these four notable ones, okay, in verse 8, because you know about this already, okay? So, Alexander's four generals, okay? I know some of you have watched the video, some of you have not, okay? So, mm, I see now, here, here's a breakdown now. You see that? You see on this side? Everybody's like, mm. okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna name them. Okay, you have Cassander, who was over Macedon and Greece. Okay, Cassander. Then you have Lysimachus, who was over Thrace and Asia Minor. You had Ptolemy, who was over Egypt. You had Seleucus, who was over Syria, Persia. Seleucus or Seleucus. Okay, let me repeat them again. You've got Cassander over Macedon and Greece. Lysimachus, Thrace, Asia Minor, you've got Ptolemy, Egypt, Seleucus, Syria, Persia. Okay, anybody got that? Yes, sir. Okay, all praises. Now, Daniel 8, verse 9. The book of Daniel, chapter 8, verse 9. Come on. And out of one of them. Hold on, let me see. Because mm. there are things there I want to touch, but. Mm. Let me see, let me see. Yeah, read verse 9 again. 
people who have dared to take this night. Read. And out of one of them came mm. forth a little horn. A little horn, we're going to touch on that. Come on. Which was exceeding great. Meaning it was more powerful than the four generals of Alexander. Read. Toward the south and toward the east uh -huh. and toward the pleasant land. Now, this little horn that came forth that was powerful. Give me 2 Maccabees 4 verse 7. 2 Maccabees chapter 4 verse 7. Okay. Because we dealt with the Alexander's four generals. Get that in 2 Maccabees 4 verse 7. Second book of Maccabees, chapter 4, verse 7. Read. But after the death of Seleucus. Seleucus. So after the death of Seleucus, one of Alexander's generals, come on. When Antiochus. When who? When Antiochus. That's the literal one in Daniel 8, verse 9. Come on. Called Epiphanes. Epiphanes means God's reign on earth. That is his name. That's what his name means. God's reign on earth. Read again. The second book of Maccabees, chapter 4, verse 7. Read. And after the death of Seleucus, uh -huh. when Antiochus called Epiphanes, Ray. took the kingdom, Jason, the brother of Onias, this is Onias the third. Come on, labored underhand to be high priest. So Onias the third labored underhand to become the high priest. This is Onias the third. Okay, write that down. Okay, so now Seleucus. The reason why it's significant is because um, Antiochus comes out of the Seleucus Empire or the Seleucus Empire or this lineage. Okay, go back. Daniel 8. Verse 9 again. The book of Daniel chapter 8 verse 9. Read. And out of one of them came forth a little horn, mm -hmm. which waxed exceeding great Read. toward the south Come on. and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. And towards the pleasant land. That goes into uh, the land of Israel later on. Watch this. Give me first Maccabees 1 verse 20. Okay. So this Seleucus this, 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 this uh, Antiochus that comes out of the lineage of Seleucus, right? First Maccabees 1 verse 20. First book of Maccabees, chapter 1 verse 20. Remember what we just read in Daniel 8 verse 9. Don't forget that. It says, He came forth a little horn, which works exceeding grace towards the south, and towards the east, and towards the pleasant land. First Maccabees 1 verse 20. This book of Maccabees, the one is twin. Uh -huh. if, we are, if, if, if we were to tra retrace his, his steps, start of a 17. Okay. This book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 17. Go ahead. Wherefore he entered into Egypt mm -hmm. with a great multitude, uh -huh. with chariots, Rain. and elephants, and horsemen, mm -hmm. and a great navy. Rain. So he entered into Egypt. Who was over Egypt? Petroleum. Petroleum was over Egypt. Come on. And made war against Ptolemy, uh -huh. king of Egypt. Rain. But Ptolemy was afraid of him. Come on. And fled. Mm -hmm. And many were wounded to death. Rain. Thus they got the strong cities in the land of Egypt, Rain. and he took the spoils of the all. Uh -huh. And after that, and after that, Antiochus had smitten Egypt. He returned again in the hundred forty and third year. Hundred forty and third year. So hundred and forty-three. Now watch this. Keep reading. Finish that verse. We're gonna jump up to verse ten. And went up against Israel and Jerusalem. With a great multitude. So that's the pleasant land, right? The east, the west is going into what? The west is going into Egypt. Where is that? Let me see, let me see. Daniel 8. And there's the east. It says the south, no, that's Egypt. And towards the east. The east, remember, the east goes into the land of Jerusalem. Okay? So before he entered into the land of Jerusalem, remember, we had colonies around. You understand? Remember what Christ said in Luke 21? When he says, those that are what? Those, those that are what? Those that are in the countries. So where were the countries? Yes, Jerusalem was the, the main land, okay? Which is Hebron, which is Judah, okay? Then you had what? Northern Kingdom, Southern Kingdom. So we had what? We have different lands. Joshua 18, you believe that? Okay? So that's some history there for you. Okay, so now, this is what he's going into. So, to get to the land, remember Jerusalem was fortified. Don't forget that. He's coming to the east and then to the pleasant, pleasant land. Okay. Okay, so go back to where was that now? First Maccabees 1. Read verse 10. First book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 10. Mm -hmm. 
and they came out of them a wicked root. They came out of them a wicked root. That's what we read. The little holy Daniel in verse 9. Read. And Yoshes, mm -hmm. son in Epiphany. Epiphany, that's what we read earlier on. Read. Son of Antiochus the king. So this is Antiochus the Great. He's son of Antiochus the Great. This Antiochus surname Epiphanes is Antiochus the Fourth. Okay, come on. Who had been an hostage at Rome, mm -hmm. and he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seventh year of the kingdom of the Greeks. You see that hundred and thirty seventh year of the kingdom of the Greeks. Okay, wait. You know, that's it on that, that's it on that. Jump down to verse 20. This book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 20. Come on. And after that, Antiochus had spent in Egypt, mm -hmm. he returned again in the 140 and third year. So now, you see in the 137th year, in verse 10, here in verse 20, it says, in what year? In the 140 and third year. Uh -huh. Read on. And went up against Israel. And Jerusalem with a great multitude. Now he's coming, he's coming for us. Okay? Antiochus is coming for us. Read up. And entered proudly into the sanctuary mm -hmm. and took away the golden altar. Read. And the candlestick of light. Come on. And all the vessels thereof. Read. And the table of the showbread. And the pouring vessels. And the vials. And the censers of gold. Mm. And the veil. And the crowns and the golden ornaments that were before the temple, all which he pulled off. Because guess what? What, what the nations, what they do all the time is they rob us. Okay? It happened during the time of the Greeks. It happened during the time of the Spanish Inquisition. Okay? The Portuguese Inquisition. When Ferdinand and Isabella sent Christopher Columbus to rob us. Okay? In 1447, that was the Portuguese Inquisition. Okay? 1447. Write that down. 1447. That was the Portuguese equation. And we was rich. We were ruling as the Moors. Okay? And guess what they did? They robbed us. They used our spoils to sell us in slavery to insure the ships. Where did they get the money from? Our gold. Our silver. Okay? Just like they are doing right here. Okay? Read. He took also the silver and the gold mm -hmm. and the precious vessels. Come on. Also, he took the hidden treasures which he found. Right. And when he had taken all away, he went into his own land, mm -hmm. having made a great massacre and spoken very proudly. Now, that's some heavy stuff right there. Read verse 24 again. I want to show you something with this. First book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 24. Right. And when he had taken all away, mm -hmm. he went into his own land. He did what? He went into his own land. Stop right there. Give me Daniel chapter 11. Daniel 11 verse 28. I want to show you something right here. We read this verse all the time. The book of Daniel chapter 11 verse 28. Come on. Then shall he return into his, his land with great riches. That's Antiochus. This is talking about Antiochus right here. Go ahead. And his heart shall be against the holy covenant. Because uh -huh. what was he doing? Defying our temple, right? And he shall do exploits mm. and return to his own land. You see that? They were exploiting our what? Our riches and our wealth. Okay? So now, mm, I'm going to be jumping around. Uh, uh, I'm going to jump around here. Okay, give me Daniel 11 verse 30. Okay? Daniel chapter 11 verse 30. Okay? So um, you can read the whole chapter on your own. Okay, I don't want to touch that today. We went, we went over this chapter many times. Okay, Daniel chapter 11, verse 30. Read that. The book of Daniel chapter 11, verse 30. Come on. For the ships of Shittim mm -hmm. shall come against him. The him, the him here is talking about who? Antiochus. Shittim is going, going into Rome. Okay? Rome and Greece were in what? Were at war with each other. Come on. Therefore, he shall be grieved and return. He shall be what? He shall be grieved and return. So read on. To return to what? To overthrow us and to destroy us. Read and have indignation against the Holy Covenant. And he will have indignation against the Holy Covenant. Come on. So shall he do. Uh -huh. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. So now, you see, the, you see what's going on here? Antiochus had help. Antiochus had help of our own people helping him to overthrow us. To, to, to pollute the sanctuary. 
Antioch has that help. Okay? Read that part again, verse 30. The book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 30. Read. For the ships of Shittim mm -hmm. shall come against him. Come on. Therefore, he shall be grieved and return. Come on. And have indignation against the Holy Covenant. Read. So shall he do. Uh -huh. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. Now, I want to show you something. Give me Daniel 8, verse 11. I told you today I want to go into prophecies and stuff like that. Okay, read that. Daniel 8, verse 11. We're going to read 11 and 12. Come on. The book of Daniel, chapter 8, verse 11. Watch this. What we read in Daniel 11, Daniel is repeating it again in Daniel 8. Read. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host. The prince of the host goes into our people, read on. And by him, uh -huh. the daily sacrifice was taken away. You see that? By him, by Antiochus, the daily sacrifices was taken away. We could no longer sacrifice into our temples. And he had help. Why we could not? Okay? He had intelligence with them that helped him. Okay, come on. And the place of his sanctuary was cast down. The place of his sanctuary was cast down. Meaning the place of our sanctuary was cast down. Read. Right? And an host was given him. That host right there, that wicked Israelites. Read. Right? And an host was given him against the daily sacrifice. You see that thing? An host was given him. That's the intelligence that Daniel is talking about in Daniel 11 verse 30. Read. Right? By reason of transgression. By reason of wickedness. Read. Right? And cast down the truth to the ground. Uh -huh. And it practiced and it practiced and prospered. So they helped him to cast the truth down. Meaning what? To destroy the Bibles. Just like Hitler was doing. Burning the Bibles. So that's what's going on here. Watch this. Give me first mark up is one verse 10. We did this all the time. Okay. I'm putting some context for you. So you can understand. What Daniel is explaining here, it's not in plain speech. What we are reading in 1st Maccabees, they are making it plain for us. Okay? Read. 1st Book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 10. Read. And there came out of them a wicked fruit. Read. Antiochus, uh -huh. surname Epiphanes. Come on. Some son of Antiochus the king, uh -huh. who had been a hostage at Rome. That's what we read in Daniel 11, verse 30. Read. And he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seventh year of the kingdom of the Greeks. Read. In those days when they out of Israel wicked men. You see that? That's the host. That's the host in Daniel 11. That's the host in Daniel 8, verse 11 and 12. The intelligence with them, meaning he had help. Read. Who persuaded many, uh -huh. say, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen. Come on. That are round about us. Read. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. Because guess what? When we were sacrificing, they didn't want that. They were okay when they were what? when our forefathers and foremothers and kids were eating pork and all that. They said, No, since we stopped eating pork, we have had much sorrow. We want to go back. Doesn't that for sound familiar hmm? during the Exodus? Isn't that what our forefathers said? Yes. We want to go back. Okay, that's what we are reading again. Go ahead. Come on. So this device pleased them all. You see that? They, meaning this device pleased them well. I don't know which version you're reading. Read again. First book of Micah, chapter 1, verse 13. Go ahead. So this device pleased them well. It pleased them well. Our people, they were pleased by this. Okay, come on. Then certain of the people were so forward. They were so forward. They, they were chattered up. Go ahead. That they went to the king uh -huh. who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen. You see that thing? Now they said, No, we also want to join the Olympics. We want to join the Olympics. We want to go into the gym. Okay? Because that was the that's Greek customs. That's Greek philosophy. That's Greek culture. Okay? All these gymnasiums that you see today, yes, that was part of it. Go ahead. We're gonna read about it in a second. Go ahead. Whereupon they built a place of exercise uh -huh. at Gym, Gymnasium. Okay. The word gymnos, that's the etymology of the word, by the way, gym. Comes from the word gymnos, which is Latin, to mean to be naked. That's how the word gym comes from, gymnos, to exercise naked. So during the time of the Greeks, the who virgin active and all that, yeah, 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 you go, you, when you, walk in, you go in there, there was no spandex. There was no lady. No, no. 
You went there, you went in there, no clothes, yeah. When they were doing all these high jumps, yeah, they were swinging. Read that thing again. This book of Maccabees, chapter 1. Just letting all their nakedness just to win, like it says in uh, uh, Exodus. What's going on? Okay. Three verse 14 again. Come on. First book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 14. Where? Whereupon they built a place of exercise. They built a place of exercise during the time of the Greeks. Our forefathers, they said, we also want to join the heathens to do this. Where? At Jerusalem. Uh, according to the customs of the heathen. According to the customs of the heathen. Okay. Is that it on that? Read on. Verse 15. And made themselves uncircumcised. They made themselves uncircumcised. So, there were those are forefathers that grew up, they, they, they circumcised their flesh, but they made themselves uncircumcised. How did they do that? Spiritually. They did that. Meaning they went back to sin. They stopped keeping God's commandments. That's why he says, by reason of transgressions in Daniel 8. Okay, come on. And forsook the Holy Covenant. That's how they made themselves uncircumcised. They forsook the Holy Covenant. And they were helping Antiochus because Antiochus were wanting to go against the Holy Covenant. Right? And joined themselves to the heathen. They joined themselves to the heathen. Go watch this, come on. And were sold to do mischief. They were assimilated into Greek culture. Assimilation. Hellenized. Okay? This is during the time of the Hellenistic period when you read the history. Okay? No integration, but Hellenism. Like today, our, our people, they are celebrating Christmas. Yes, that's Hellenism. They've been properly Hellenized into Greek culture. That's what's going on this day. Okay? Watch this. Go back to Daniel, chapter 11. Now, give me Daniel 11, verse 31. Now. Daniel 11, verse 31. Watch this. Come on. The book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 31. No, read verse 30 so we understand that last part of that precept. Read the book of Daniel, chapter 11, the spirit. Come on. For the ships of Shittim uh -huh. shall come against him. Read. Therefore he shall be grieved mm -hmm. and return. Come on. And have indignation against the Holy Covenant. You see that? The Antiochus will have indignation against the Holy Covenant. And where did we read about that? We just read it in First Maccabees 1. Okay. Read. So shall he do. Uh -huh. He shall even return and have intelligence with them. Intelligence with them. Meaning what? He knew information that they were giving him that information. Because what? They were helping him. Because they hated the laws of God. They said, no, we're going to help you. That's today. That's what's going on today in the Christian church. The same thing. Okay? Come on. And then intelligent to them that forsake the Holy Covenant. You see that they were those that made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the Holy Covenant. That's what we read in 1 Maccabees 1. Read on. Verse 31. And arms shall stand on his part. Read. And they shall pollute the century of strength. They shall what? And shall pollute. And they shall pollute the century of strength. They shall pollute the century of strength. Okay, that's our temple. Go ahead. And shall take away the daily sacrifices. They took away the daily sacrifices because that's how we connected with the Lord. Because if you are in the midst of sin, how did you get your sins to be forgiven? We had to go to the temple and sacrifice so the Lord can atone for our sins. So when they block that, that means we have no power. Okay, come on. And they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. They shall what? And they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. They shall place the that they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. The abomination of desolation. Give me Daniel 9 verse 27. Daniel chapter 9 verse 27. They shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. So this is twofold. He's talking about during the time of the Greeks. He's also during the, talking about the time of the Romans. Beyond that, he's going into 70 AD. Okay? Daniel 9, 27. Read that. The book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 27. Read. And he shall confirm the covenant with men for one week. Come on. And in the midst of the week, mm -hmm. he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. He shall what? He shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. He shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. That's what Antiochus did. Go ahead. And for the overspreading of abomination. For the what? And for the overspreading of abomination. He shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. Go ahead. 
he shall make it desolate uh -huh. even until the consummation right. and that determined and that determined shall be poured upon the, the president. So Daniel is saying the same thing. He's just using harder words here. But he's explaining the same thing. He will make what? If they shall place the abomination that make it desolate. What is that? Give me that in first Maccabees. Okay, chapter 1, verse 54. Read that. First book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 54. Remember, this is during the time of Antiochus. Okay, come on. Now the fifteenth day of the month casting right. in the hundred forty and fifth year, uh -huh. they set up the abomination of desolation. What did they do? They set up the abomination of desolation. They are set up the abomination of the what the abomination of desolation. Read on. Upon the altar. Upon the what? Upon the altar. He's letting you know what the abomination of desolation is happening when at the altar. Read on. And build an idol altar <coughs> throughout the cities of Judah. Come on. On every side. You see that thing right there? Watch this. Give me that in 1 Maccabees 1 43. 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 43. 1 okay. Maccabees chapter 1, verse 43. Watch this. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. Meaning they agreed. Our forefathers agreed to the Greek religion called what? Democracy and politics. Right? And sacrificed unto idols. Now what did they do? And sacrifice unto our This is going to break down the abomination that make it desolate. Right? And profane the Sabbath. They profane the Sabbath. Come on. For the king that mm. sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem. Right? And, and the cities of Judah. Come on. That they should follow the strange laws of the land. We should follow the strange laws of the land. Meaning sacrificing unto idols. Idol worship. You understand? One of those strange laws of the land was what? Read verse 41. First book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 41. Come on. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom uh -huh. that all should be one people. You see that? That's another strange law of the land. Politics, democracy, Christianity, because it's all the same thing. Watch this. Daniel 8.25. Let me show you in another way that is written. Daniel 8.25. Still talk about the same guy. The same guy right here. Watch this. Daniel 8, verse 25. The book of Daniel, chapter 8, verse 25. Read. And through his policy also. Through, through his what? Through his policy Democrats. also. Democrats. Democrats. That's what we read in First Maccabees 1 from 1. Read. He shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. That's talk about Antiochus. Read on. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. Come on. And by peace. And by what? And by peace. By democracy. Come on. Shall destroy men. You see that? By democracy shall destroy men. Go ahead. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, mm. but he shall be broken without hand. You see that thing? The prince of princes. Okay, that's another topic. Let's go back. Okay. Go back to 1 Maccabees 1. 1 Maccabees chapter 1. Read verse 45 now. First book of Maccabees chapter 1, verse 45. Come on, we're still explaining the abomination that make it desolate. Read. And forbid burnt offerings uh -huh. and sacrifice Read. and drink offerings Come on. in the temple Read. and that they should profane the Sabbath and festival day. How did they do that? Next verse. Come on. And pollute the sanctuary and holy people. You see that? They polluted the sanctuary and holy people because the abomination of, des the abomination of desolation was where? In the, on the altar. In the temple. Okay? And they polluted the sanctuary and the holy people. Meaning what? Stop sacrificing. Okay, great. Set up altars and uh, groves. You see that? That's, this is the abomination that makes it desolate. Great. And chapels of idols. And chapels of idols. Come on. And sacrifice swine's flesh. You see that? The abomination that makes it desolate. Okay, read. And unclean beasts. And unclean beasts. Swine's flesh be one of them. Okay, read on. That they should also leave their children and circumcise. You see that? They left their children. We, we, we were no longer sacrificing. We were no longer circumcising our children, physically and spiritually. Right? And make their souls abominable. Make their minds abominable. Okay, come on. Defiling of souls. Right? With all manner of uncleanness and profanation. Abominations. The abominations of desolation. Okay? Now, Daniel 8. Daniel chapter 8. Read verse 10. The book of Daniel, chapter 8, verse 10. Remember, Daniel 8, verse 9, we went through all these precepts to explain Daniel 8 and 9. Read. And it works great even to the host of heaven. You see that? It says, it works great even to the host of heaven. Remember, 
Go back to verse Maccabees 1 verse 20. This book of Maccabees. You know what? Now read verse 9. Don't go there. Just read verse 9. We will explain it with this. The book of Daniel, chapter 8, verse 9. Come on. And out of one of them came forth a little horn. Rain. Which was exceeding great. Come on. Toward the south and toward the east. Rain. And toward the pleasant land. Okay, that's Jerusalem. Come on. And it was great. Even to the host of heaven. That's the key right there. So he went to the present land. He says it works great. Even, meaning indeed, to the host of heaven. Read on. And cast down some of the host. He cast down some of the host. Meaning those that did not agree. Okay. Those that didn't agree, they were cast down. Read. And of the stars to the ground. And of the what? And of the stars to the ground. And of the stars to the ground. Read. And stamped upon them. And stamped upon them. Watch this. Give me that in Exodus, okay? Give me Exodus. Exodus chapter 32, verse 13. He says, the stars to the ground. Who's the stars? That's the host of heaven, okay? The stars to the ground were cast down, and he stamped upon them. Exodus 32, verse 13. Read that. Exodus chapter 32, verse 13. Read Remember Abraham, uh -huh. Isaac, Come and on. Islam, Read. thy servants to whom thou swearest by thine own self, Come on. and said unto them, Read. I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. I will do what? I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. Okay, let's talk about the 12 tribes of Israel. Read on. And all this land that I have spoken of. That's the pleasant land that we read about in Daniel 8. Read. Will I give unto your seed? Come on. And they shall inherit it forever. That's what Antiochus was, was coming for. The pleasant land. Okay? And the stars of heaven is talking about what? The 12 tribes of Israel. Because we was in Jerusalem. Go back to Daniel 8. Read verse 10 again. The book of Daniel chapter 8 verse 10. Read. And it was great even to the host of heaven. Mm -hmm. And cast down some of the host. Read. And of the stars to the ground. So now, read, read verse 11 and 12. Because we read this already. The book of Daniel chapter 8 verse 11. Come on. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host. Read. And by him the daily sacrifice was taken away. Let's talk about Antiochus. Read. And the place of his sanctuary was cast down. Read. And then host was given him against the daily sacrifice. Come on. By reason of transgression. Mm -hmm. And it cast down the truth to the ground. And it practiced and prospered. He says they cast down the truth to the ground. And remember they had help. First Maccabees 156. Let me show you how they cast the truth to the ground. And they had help doing this. First Maccabees 156, read that. First book of, first book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 56. Come on. And when they had read in pieces the books of the law. The what? The books of the law. Meaning what? They were what? They were tearing our Bibles up. You know there was a video, there's a video on YouTube. This wicked Negro called, what's his name? Mm. I think now he's arrested, he's in jail now for pedophilia. What's his name? He was shooting the Bible with bullets. The brother was holding the Bible like this and he was shooting the Bible with bullets. That wicked Negro, okay? Okay, read that thing again. First book of Micah, chapter 1, verse 56. So the same way they had help back then, they, they have helped today. Read again. And when they had read in pieces the books of the law, right. which they found, mm -hmm. they burnt them with fire. You see, that's what that's what Hitler did. Okay? That's what Hitler did in his last days. You think it's not gonna happen again? It will happen again, of course. That's why you need to know when the feast are happening by heart. It's gonna come a time where you're gonna not gonna have this Bible. He said, No, no, I'll just watch it on YouTube. No, I just watch it on my I just read it on my phone. That's why it says, commit these things to memory. Okay? It will come a time where we're going to have to run and hide. Okay? Yeah, that, those days are coming. Them days are coming. Christ talked about that day. Okay? And I think we touched briefly on it on class, right? Okay, it's coming. It's coming. Where it's going to be so bad that they are going to be electrocuting you. For you to say, I'm not an Israelite no more. Yeah. Does, are, you still, are you still a Jew? Being electrocuted? Hmm? Being set on fire? If you look at the history, you look at um, Atawalpa. Is it Atawalpa? 
I think it's a Tawapo. Yeah. You know when he was banged on the stake? Okay. Yeah. Now the kingdom. Before, who did that? The Spaniards did that. And who were the Spaniards? The Spaniards are the Romans, by the way. The Spaniards are the Romans. King Isa uh, Queen Isabella, King Ferdinand. Yeah, those are Roman. They call them what? Um, Ro what? Roman, um, Roman Spaniards, something like that. There's some, some dual name, hyphenated name like that. But they are Romans. Okay, watch this. Now, um, let me see. I got this. I got the. I got distracted there for a second. Okay, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Go back to Daniel eight verse twelve. The book of Daniel chapter eight verse twelve. And in hope was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. You know what? On that, read First Maccabees one fifty seven because I mentioned it. Let's just read. It's right there in the next verse. Verse 57. First book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 57. Go ahead. And wheresoever was found. And wheresoever, come on. And wheresoever was found with any the book of the of the testament. If you were found with the Bible, what happened? Or if any consented to the law. If you said you keep the command, you keep the Sabbath, you are fringes, you grow your beard, you observe the Passover, right? Go ahead. The king's commandment was. The king's commandment was what? That they should be put to death. You see that? So they were putting us to death. So that's why it says we fight for our laws. Our lives and our laws. How do you think you're going to do it? Listen, it's going to get rough, okay? Don't think it's just cool being an Israelite. This is war. You mean to tell me that the nations that put you in captivity, right? They change your names. They give you a new culture. They give you a new dress code, a new diet. They taught you wrong. They just gonna be just sitting there watching your YouTube rising against them. Because you see, some of us we don't think like that. You don't think that the white man is sitting there saying, hmm, they are rising up there. Eh? You know when we teach in Pretoria and Macedon? You know how many Edomites come there? They may not come in the front of us, but they be roaming around there. We see them a lot now, taking videos of us, okay? I remember there was a day we were teaching in Thessalonica, I'll never forget this day. This white man, he stood on the other side, I think I was with you, right? And all of a sudden, he leaves from where he was, he comes to the front, okay? Tall Edomite with tattoos, okay? And he was wearing a military uniform. And I'm not talking about the brown one, no, not the white one. So he wasn't a, he was not like a, he was not a foot soldier, okay? He had rank, okay? Like Mukhenel, Kenel, those type of ranks. He stood there, okay? And he was, he didn't, he was, listen, he was listening, then he came to the front. And I asked him, do you have any questions? He just ignored me. He looked at the posters. Because we had posters, we just didn't have them now, they're looking all nice. But he, we looked at the posters, he looked at them, he looked at the Caesar Borgia, he looked at the 12 tribes, he looked at the transatlantic, he was sitting there and said, hmm, wait a minute, wait a minute. And now we teach him, okay? I don't know, I don't know if he was there. He was there, right? The tattoos, yeah. And after that, he just left. Up, left, never came back again, okay? And then we started to have some issues when we were teaching at camp. Negroes just coming out of nowhere, just having a problem with us. Okay? So this is not a game. There was a brother that came to camp. I think we were still teaching next to the next to the, the midland court. He came, the way he asked the questions, like you could tell that this guy, he knows the scriptures, but he was testing to see where's the level of understanding. You see, the, that question was loaded with, with, with ammunition. Hmm? And I thought about it, I'm like, am I, well, how am I going to answer this? You know, I, I said to him, I think he was, he was asking about K. Yeah, he asked about K. I'm like, a Negro, no fringes, but he's asking about K 
And is Cain going to be punished when judgment comes? I'm like, Cain is going to be punished when judgment comes. I'm like, you would have to, like, you would have to know. No, 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 no. He didn't say, is Cain going to be punished when judgment comes? He said, is Cain going to be punished today when judgment comes? He used the word today. I was like, there's no way that a simple Negro can ask something like that. He would have to know, wait a minute, Cain is back. Who's Cain today? He would have to know that. Okay? And so I picked it up. You know what I said? I said, no, no, no. After the, the flood happened, you know, Cain was judged. I left it there. Because I knew where he was going with this. I said, I'm going to give him a rope to hang himself. Yeah, that was it. Because I could see he's got a, that's a loaded statement. It's not just any question he's making. He's asking. So don't think when we go out there to teach brothers, people that come there, is just any regular Negro who who's just wants to be argumentative. No. Some of them are sent, okay, to gauge where you're at. You understand? So don't sleep, okay? Don't be sleeping up in here. Read verse 57 again. First Maccabees. This book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 57. Go ahead. And wheresoever was found with any book of the testament, uh -huh. or if any consented to the law, Read. the king's commandment was that they should be that they should put him to death. You see that? That they should put him to death. So you better stand for this Bible. Sisters as well. Okay? You better stand for this Bible. You better study. That's why I need you sisters to study and be sharp. Okay? I don't want that is opinion. Okay? You brothers too. You better study this book. Because the day when the when when the, when it comes down on us, <laughs> you have to stand for this book. The Lord is with us, okay? The book said God is with us. But it's not going to be, it's not gonna fall on our lap. You brothers understand that? Huh? Yes, sir, sir. This is not going to fall on our land, okay? Much tribulation before we get the kingdom. And the nations know that. Watch this. But the Lord is with us. We're going to overcome by the blood of the land. Understand that thing. Okay, go back to Daniel 8, okay? I'm almost done. Daniel chapter 8. I know I want to say that, but really, I'm almost done. Daniel 8, verse 18. Watch this. Come on. The book of Daniel chapter 8, verse 13. Read. Then I heard one saint speaking, uh -huh. and another saint said unto the certain saint we speak, Read. How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice? Come on. And the transgression of desolation. And the what? And the transgression of desolation. The transgression of desolation is the abomination of desolation, which we read in First Maccabees 1, 43 down. Okay, come on. To give both the sanctuary. To what? To give both the sanctuary uh -huh. and the host to be trodden underfoot. So now what saint is asking is like, how long is this madness going to go on for? Where these heathens are polluting our temple. How long is this going to continue? Okay? Because you see what Antiochus is doing. Read. And he said unto me, uh -huh. unto two thousand and three hundred days. Come on. Then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Now that right there is the feast of dedication. Okay, now watch this. I think there's a link I sent you. Did they send you the link? Okay, just forwarding the link. Forwarding the link. Let me see, let me see. Open the browser so I can see where you must read from. Because there's an article here. It's going to tell you the time period during the time when the sanctuary was polluted. Okay, during the time of Antiochus. Let me see. Mm. Uh, give me one second. Let me look at it. Because I was just, you know, rushing when I was looking at it. So, um, they actually go over, um, the, the, you know, the Greek history. Um, is mentioning all the, the Alexander's four generals, Antiochus the fourth coming into play, and so on and so on and so forth. Um, Antiochus the fourth, which is who we are reading about, okay? Bear with me, one second. It's just it's a long article, so a lot of stuff here. But there is something that I need. 
sunt lăsat într-o gândită. Este relativ în șoc, dar este un echip de sens. Yes, read this one lately. Ok? You understand that either understanding is possible, but it is more likely that. Read that. Ok, give him that. So this is an article, I'll send it so on the group. I'll send it on the second as a spy group, so we read about it. Ok, you can read the whole thing on your own. Ok. Um, yeah, just show it. Do, do you see it? Ok, read that. Come on. Um, no, um, read, read the verse again. Daniel 8, verse 18 and 14 again. No, just read verse 14. The book of Daniel, chapter 8, verse 14. Read. And he said unto me, Read. Unto 2,300 days. Unto 2,300 days. Read. Then shall the sanctuary be cleared. So now, Daniel, you see, the saint is that now, this saint that is asking is getting a response here. He says, Unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. So this time period right here, we're going to get it from the East. Read that. Now the article. Either understanding is possible, uh -huh. but it is more likely that this means 2,300 days. 2,300 days. That, that's exactly what it's saying. They are, they are trying to make it seem like it's not what it's saying. Read. The date when the temple was cleansed. The what? The date when the temple was cleansed. The date when the, te the temple was cleansed. They're going to give me the date when the temple was cleansed. Come on. Is well established uh -huh. as December 25th. It, what? Is well established as December 25th. The 5th and the 20th day of month Keslu. Go ahead. 100, 165 BC. 165 BC. So 165 BC, that's when the temple was cleansed. Read on. If we come back 2,300 days. Now they, they're going to come back 2,300 days. Go ahead. From then, uh -huh. we come to the year. We come to the what? We come to the year Read. when Antiochus Epiphanes uh -huh. began his persecution in earnest. What year was that? 171 BC. 171 BC. So the temple Antiochus came against us when? 171 BC. When we read in First Maccabees 1 verse 20 down. Okay? 171 BC. To 165 BC, that's when the temple was polluted. Okay? 171 BC to 165 BC, that's when the temple was polluted. Okay? Now, um, yeah, that's it on that. Uh, let me see. Yeah, some of the, some of the things that they're saying here, yeah, the, you know, it's not making any sense. It's not lining up, okay? But so the thing that I wanted to I wanted to show you here is the actually you know what? Let me say something. Let me say something real quick. Um, there definitely is something that I saw here when I was reading this article. Watch this. Mm, no, that's it. That's it on there. I can't find it now. Okay, uh, go back to Daniel 8 now. Daniel 8, read verse 14 again. The book of Daniel, chapter 8, verse 14. Read. And he said unto me, uh -huh. unto 2,300 days. Read. Then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. So from 171 BC to 165 BC. Okay? So Antiochus, when he came for us, 171. That's when, that's when they started to pollute our sanctuary. Okay, and it was unclean until 165 BC because something would happen in 165 BC. So let's read about that. Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11, read verse 31 now. The book of Daniel chapter 11, verse 31. Come on. And arms shall stand on his part. Read. And they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. Come on. And shall take away the daily sacrifice. Read. And and they shall place the abomination that make it desolate. We read it plainly in First Maccabees 1. Read. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by flatteries. By flatteries. He said, and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupted. Shall what? Shall he corrupt by flatteries. You understand? Onias the third, Melanus was one of them. Melanus was a Jew. 
Onias was a Jew, okay, and they were flattered by Antiochus. We know. But the people that do know their God. But the people that do know their God. What does that mean? The people that do know their God. Give me that in first John 2, verse 3. But the people that do know their God. First John 2. First book of John, chapter 2, verse 3. Right? And hereby we do know that we know him. Come on. If we keep his commandments. You see that? That's what it means. Go back. Daniel 11. The book of Daniel. Chapter 11, verse 31. Read. And arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. Come on. And shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that make her desolate. Read. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by flatteries. Read. But the people that do know their God uh -huh. shall be strong. But the people that do keep the commandments shall what? Shall be strong uh -huh. and do exploits. Now that's it right there. Watch this. The people that keep the commandments, guess what they will do? He says, shall be strong and do exploits. What is he talking about? Because Daniel is prophesying it. Okay? That's now when, when 165 BC, when we're going to now be able to cleanse our sanctuary. Okay? Watch this. Hmm. Keep going. Verse 33. And, and they that you know what? Hmm. Give me first Maccabees 1. I'm going to be quick on this one. First Maccabees, no, first Maccabees 2, verse 1. This it says, the Maccabees. people that will do exploits. Read that. First Maccabees 2, verse 1. First book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 1. Read. In those days arose Matthias. Matthias. In those days arose Matthias. Come on. The son of John. Read. The son of Simeon. Mm. A priest of the sons of Jordan. Where? From Jerusalem. And dwelt in Modin. Now jump down to verse 6. First book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 6. Come on. And when he saw the blasphemies that were committed in Judah and Jerusalem by Antiochus, read, he said, Woe is me. Mm -hmm. Wherefore was I born to see this misery of my people? Come on. And of the holy city, read, and to dwell there. And when it was delivered into the hand of the enemy, come on. And the, and the sanctuary into the hand of strangers, yeah, come on. The temple is become as, as a man without glory. That's exactly what was going on in our temple. That was what was going on to our temple. Okay? So it says, Marathias rose up. So he's one of those brothers, one of those forefathers that would do exploits that Daniel is talking about. Okay? Jump down to verse 45. First book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 45. Read. Really? Then Matthias and his friends went round about right. and pulled down the altar. Uh -huh. and, with, and what children soever they found within the coast of Israel uncircumcised, those they circumcised belly. You see what they did? They found you not circumcised, they forced you. Mm -hmm. They chopped it. Okay, come on. <laughs> they <laughs> <pissed>. <laughs> <laughs> That's a beautiful stuff. Right Go ahead. They pursued also after the proud men. Uh, meaning those that hated the commandments, meaning those that what those that helped Antiochus. Go ahead. And the work prospered in their hands. And the most high God it prospered their hands. Okay? Watch this. Now, that's verse 47, right? Go back to Daniel 11. Read verse 32 now. No, no, verse 33. The book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 33. Go ahead. And they that understand among the people uh -huh. shall instruct me. You see that? And they that what? And they that understand among the people. And they that understand among the people. Who's there? That's you. That's you, brothers. It says, they that understand among the people shall do what? Read that again. The book of Daniel chapter 11, verse 33. Come on. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Shall instruct many. That's why we go to the king, we go to camp, we instruct many of our people that don't know this truth. We have class, we instruct many of our people that don't know this truth. That's what Daniel is prophesying about here. We understand, it says, they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Ha! Romans 2 verse 18. This is how we instruct many of our people. Okay? Romans 2 verse 18. Read that real quick. Come on. 
the book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 18. Pray. And knowest his will. Knowest his will, come on. And approvest the things that are more excellent. Come on. Being instructed out of the law. Being instructed out of the law. So those that what? Those that know, understand among the people shall instruct many out of the law. Okay, come on. Next verse. Read. And are confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind. Read. A light of them which are in darkness. That's our job, brothers. That's our job right there. That's our job. Go back to where was that now. Daniel chapter 11. Okay. Daniel 11, verse 33 again. The book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 33. Read. And they that understand among the people uh -huh. shall instruct many. Shall instruct many out of God's laws. Read. Yet they shall fall by the sword. They shall fall by the sword. Read on. And by flame. Uh -huh. By captivity. Come on. And by spoil. Many days. Because they had a wicked Israelites that was helping Antiochus to destroy us. Okay. That's why he said, like, right watch this. Give me that in 1 Maccabees 2. 1 Maccabees chapter 2 now. Read verse 49. First book of Maccabees chapter 2, verse 49. Come on. Now when the time came near that Manathias should die, Read. he said unto his sons, Now hath pride and rebuke gotten strength. Come on. And the time of destruction mm -hmm. and the wrath of indignation. The wrath of indignation. Because now, because remember, Manathias was at war. Don't get it twisted. Marathias was at war, waging war against the Greeks and against our people that hate this book. Okay, come on. Now therefore, my sons, mm -hmm. be ye zealous. Be zealous, come on. Be ye zealous for the Lord. Read. And give your lives. And do what? And give your lives. And do what? And give your lives. And do what? And give, give your, your lives. lives. Read. For the covenant of your father. You see that thing right there? Our forefathers, they gave their lives for this book. That's what the Lord says. Do you see your calling, brethren? Okay. You see your calling. You sisters too. Understand that thing. Okay. You better make sure that you read the scripts. Pattern yourselves after your foremothers. Okay. You better do that thing. Because if you don't, you're going to have problems. You brothers too. You better pattern yourself after your forefathers. You understand that? Yes, sir. So, Brethren. So then you man, you better do that thing. Okay? So when you get checked, just stay in the spirit again. Okay? <laughs> Read that thing again. Come on. First book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 50. Read. Now therefore, my sons, mm -hmm. be ye zealous. Be zealous. Don't be zealous for Facebook. Yeah. No. Don't be zealous for big booty women. Okay, come on. Be ye zealous for the Lord. That's in something there, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I have to bring more stories, the step I see at camp, you can't make it up here. Yeah. You know, this past, this past camp, yeah, there was something going on at camp. Yeah. You see, our brothers were distracted. Yeah. Yeah. Sisters, be mindful. <laughs> brothers were distracted. You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> <laughs> to bring the scriptures up to bring the, put the blood in the spirit. Like, what the hell is this? Hmm? You see that front bench? That where we teach? Listen, I have to bring the scriptures up to your brother's in the spirit. Okay. Mm. Let me go back. Where was we at? Hmm. Okay, read that. Let me let me let me get that tangent. Sisters, don't ask me nothing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know what I'm talking about, eh? Yes, sir. You saw that? Yes, sir. Mm, 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 mm. I don't keep that day. That day was in front of us. Mm? Yeah, like the sky. There's a green bell now. Am I right or wrong? Like the sky. Am I right or wrong? Read that thing again. Let me calm down. First book of Michael. You see, they know what I'm talking about. They be hating like they don't know what I'm talking about. Mm. <laughs> Where was we? <laughs> <laughs> Where was we? <laughs> First book of Maccabees, 
chapter 2 verse 50 Read. Now therefore my sons Come on. be ye zealous for the Lord uh -huh. and give your lives for the covenant of your father You see that and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers Okay youthful lusts Let me bring that up let me put the spirit out there Okay I'll bring it out let me put the spirit out there Where's the scripture I think it's in Timothy right Where it talks about youthful lusts Hmm. Yes, uh, Second Timothy two. Read that verse twenty two. Come on. Second book of Timothy, chapter two, verse twenty two. Read. Flee also youthful lusts. You see that? Flee also youthful lusts. Come on. But follow righteousness. But follow righteousness. That's the law right there. I'm taking to you, brothers, now. Okay. Forget this guy. Stay focused on this. Read again. Second book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 22. Read. Flee also youthful lust. Come on. But follow righteousness. But follow righteousness. Not big booty woman. Go ahead. Faith. Uh -huh. Chant. Come on. Peace. Read. With them that call on the Lord. You see that thing? With them that call on the Lord. Go ahead. Out of a pure heart. You see that? That's your mindset right there. That's the mindset you have to have. Okay, you have to flee youthful lusts. And how do you do that? You better fast regularly. Okay? You better fast regularly. Understand that. Okay, let's go back. First Maccabees 2. Okay? First book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 50. Go ahead. Now, therefore, my sons, Ray? be zealous for the Lord. Come on. And give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. He says, Give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. Read on. Come on. Call to remembrance. Call to what? Call to remembrance. Remember the days of old. Come on. What acts our fathers did in their time. You see that? That's how you pattern yourself up to your forefathers. Okay? But guess what? Your forefathers are not going to. The Lord is not going to come down here and say, No, that's your forefather right there. It's not going to happen like that, by the way. It's happening right now. Stay in the spirit. Okay? We are at war. Uh -huh. The prophets are back. You keep saying the prophets are back. What are you talking about? The prophets are back. Okay? Read that thing again. Come on. First book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 51. Read. Call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time. Come on. So shall you receive great honor uh -huh. and an everlasting name. That thing doesn't, that, that, the everlasting, that it does not come cheap. Okay? An everlasting name will not come cheap, brothers. Okay? It's not going to come cheap. Watch this. Give me... Mm, go back to Daniel, because I got distracted. Okay? Go back to Daniel, chapter 11. I think that's where we were. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah, Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11 and verse 33. The book of Daniel chapter 11, verse 33. Read. And they that understand among the people uh -huh. shall instruct men. Read. Yet they shall fall by the sword. Come on. And by flame. Read. By captivity and by spoil many days. You see that thing? Come on, next verse. Read. That God yeah. goes into Marathias and his brethren. Okay, Marathias and his sons. Now he's encouraging his sons because he's about to die. Go ahead. And he fought cheerfully the battle of Israel. Understand that. Okay, read. Now, when they shall fall, they shall be hoping with their little help. Read again, verse 34. Come on. The book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 34. Come on. Now, when they shall fall. When they shall fall, when Marathias will fall, when Marathias and his brethren. Well, that was helping him will fall. What's going to happen? They shall be hoping with a little help. They shall be hoping with a little help. Go ahead. But many shall cleave to them with flatteries. But we want to deal with that part right there when it says, When they shall fall, they shall be hoping with a little help. Watch this. Give me the book of 1st Maccabees 3 now. Okay? 1st Maccabees 3. You know what? Something has escaped. Go back to where it was at, verse 33 again. Something I want to explain there. This book of Matt, the book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 33. Read. And they that understand among the people, they that understand among the people, come on, shall instruct many. Shall instruct many. Read. Yet they shall fall by the sword. Yet they shall fall by the sword. Come on. And by flame. 
by captivity and by spoil now days. Now you see that part right there when it says, and they that understand among the people shall instruct men. Yes, we're gonna instruct our people out of God's laws, right? Okay, watch this. We are in the last days. They that understand is talking about you, brothers. Okay, or oh, that's the hope. The adventure. Okay, okay. Now watch this. Give me Revelation chapter 10, verse 11. Watch this. Revelation chapter 10, verse 11. The book of Revelation, chapter 10, verse 11. Go ahead. And he said unto me, uh -huh. Thou must prophesy again. Thou must what? Thou must prophesy again. What? Thou must prophesy again. Again, again. He says, Thou shalt what? Thou must what? Thou must prophesy again. So the Lord is telling John the Revelator, says, Thou must prophesy again. Go ahead. Before many people. Before what? Before many people. Before many peoples. Come on. And nations. Uh -huh. And tongues. And kings. kings. So what is he letting you know? He's telling you that John the Revelator will be back. And he's prophesying again to many peoples. So that's what's going on right now. They that understand, and they that understand shall instruct many. Okay. The prophets who are reading about in the book of the Maccabees, they are back. Only this time the war is spiritual. You understand? And that type of war is more deadly, by the way, because you don't see it. It's a cold war. Okay? That they call it a cold war. That's what he's talking about, right there. That's what he's because it's a spiritual one. It's a cold war. Okay? Watch this. Um, go back now. Daniel 11, we read verse 34. The book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 34. Go ahead. Now when they shall fall, mm -hmm. they shall be hoping with their little help. Come on. But many shall give to them to flatterers. Now watch this. Give me that thing now, First Maccabees 3. I mean, First Maccabees 2. Okay? First Maccabees 2, 64. He says, but when they shall fall, talk about Marathias and his brethren. He says, when they shall fall, they will be hoping with their little help. Read that. First Maccabees 2, 64. Read. First book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 64. Come on. Wherefore ye, my sons, uh -huh. be valid. Read. And show yourselves men. Do what? And show yourselves men. Do what? And show, show yourselves, yourselves men. That's it right there. Go ahead. In the behalf of the law. In the behalf of the law. You see that thing? Read. For by it. For by the law, keeping it, applying it, defending it. Read. Shall ye obtain glory. You're going to get the glory of the kingdom. Read. And behold. Come on. I know that your brother Simon uh -huh. is a man of counsel. Come on. Give ear unto him. Ray. Give ear unto him always. Mm -hmm. He shall be a father unto you. Come on. Read that, read that part again. He says what? Because you, listen. You know why I'm bringing this up? Because I know black Asian Negroes. When you brothers come into this truth, you need to understand. Yet the Lord sets up leadership. But we fathers unto you. I don't care who can preach like a role of you. Because you know why that's important? The most said God, you know what he's doing? He's testing you. Because, give me that, give me the royal law. Not, not the one that you know. The, the one that was given with promise. That one. Give me that in Ephesians 6 and 1. Watch this. I'm going to show you something with this right here. I'm going to show you the parallels, right? Here's the parallels. Because a lot of the times you read the, the Ten Commandments, right? He is not thinking. Watch this. Read that. Ephesians 6 and 1. The book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 1. Go ahead. Children, mm. obey your parents in the Lord. In the what? In the Lord. Not in the flesh. In the Lord. In the Lord. In the truth. You see what the Lord is telling you? He says, obey your parents in the Lord. So when you brothers are given counsel or you don't see counsel, you break in this commandment. And guess what? You will die young. Why do you think today children are dying before their parents? Yeah, because they are breaking this law right here. Parents are bathing their sons. Read that again. The book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 1. Read. Children, obey your parents in the law. Obey your parents in the law. Come on. For this is right. For this is what? For this is right. Give me Deuteronomy 6, 17, and 18, real quick. Okay. 
for this is right. Let's see what it means to be right. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 17. Where? Ye shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God. So the subject matters about keeping God's laws. Read. Right? And his testimonies. Uh, and his statutes. Read. Right? Which he had commanded thee. Which he had commanded thee. Read on. And thou shalt do that which is right. Thou shalt what? And thou shalt do that which is right. Thou shalt do that which is right. What is that? Keeping of the commandments. For this is right. Read. Right? And good in the sight of the Lord. Uh, that it may be well with thee. That it may be what? That it may be well with thee. That it may be well with you. Read on. And that thou mayest go in uh -huh. and possess the good land which the Lord swear unto thy father. So if you don't do that, you're not going to get the kingdom. I hope you men understand that. You get that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Go back to where was it? I'm not done. Ephesians 6. Let's read that. Ephesians 6, verse 1 again. Come on. The book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 1. Read. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Come on. For this is right. You see that? That's what it means to be right. We read it earlier. Come on. Honor thy father and mother. Read. Which is the first commandment with promise. Now read that thing again. The book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 2. Go ahead. Honor thy father and mother. Honor thy father and mother. Read. Which is the first commandment with promise. Read. That it may be well with thee. Read. And thou mayest live long on the earth. You see that? Now let me show you something with this verse. You see this verse right here? When you brothers come into the truth, you give given counsel, you don't follow it. Guess what? It's a direct reflection that you don't respect your parents. It's very direct. You can, you can lie to me all you want. You can try to convince me all you want. No, the Bible is right. You don't follow counsel here. You don't respect your parents. It's very simple. There's no info maybe. Mm -mm. It is what it is. It's that simple. You hate your parents. I hope you men understand it. You get that? Yes, sir. Okay, read again verse 2. No, no, verse 3. The book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 3. Go ahead. That it may be well with thee. That it may be well with you. Read. And thou mayest live long on the earth. That you may live long on the earth. Watch this. Next verse. And ye fathers. You fathers. Provoke not your children to wrath. Now, that verse right there. It says, you fathers do not provoke your children to wrath. What does that mean? Don't provoke your children to wrath. Does that mean, come on, little no, no? Is that what it means? No, no, you don't mean that. I'm going to show you what it means. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes, because I think I touched on this, right? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to go over it again. Because it seems brothers don't get this. Yeah. You know, like my mother used to say something. She used to say, Mohoristi man. Anybody know what that means? <laughs> they even made a movie about it. I think it was Jim Carrey's movie, right? Dumb and Dumb. Anybody know that movie? Yes, sir. Yeah, Mohoristi man. That's what it means. Meaning what? You say something, it's out of order and you know it, and the brother sitting right there said, that Negro, mm -mm. how come nobody is seeking counsel on this? And then, guess what? Here's another one. He don't say nothing. So, now, everybody can get killed because of this. You have to show me in the Bible where when you went against counsel, the Lord just rewarded you. I'm waiting. I want to see it. Give me the precepts. You're not going to find it. And if you do, it didn't end well. The end opened. Because, uh, you see, there are a lot of you, you the reason why you move like this is because the Most High is not doing those diabolical things like that. Like, quick like that. It takes time. The judgment might come two months, two, two months from now. Or guess what? Six months. Or guess what? Five years from now. I think you forgot. When it comes that you wanna think, yeah, it must be it must have been something that I did last week. No, 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 it's not that. You did it way back when. 
You forgot the Lord said, Lord, I'll, I'll teach you, I'll teach you. And you can die, the judgment doesn't come. The Lord said, don't worry. When you come back into a third or fourth generation, I'm going to show you. You're not going to know how to speak. You're not going to know how to walk. Listen, you, you cannot escape the judgment of the Mosa. But, because you can fool me, but you won't fool the Lord. That angel is sitting right there with you, that wicked Negro right there. He's busy writing. And because, how many of you actually remember that angel 24 hours a day? None. You see how easy it is to forget that the angel that is assigned to you? It's very easy, by the way. Because you are too involved in the stuff that you are doing on a day to day, and you forget that the angel is sitting right there. How many of you are seeing shadows? Anybody? At the corner of your eye? Yes. It's like somebody sitting right there? Yes. Yeah, that's your angel right there. Okay? Writing things down. And there's women angels too. Yeah. Okay, because everybody's just looking at me like I'm crazy. Give me that in Zakra real quick. You see, the sisters are excited. No, <laughs> sisters, there's women angels in this body. Where is that? I think it's Zakra chapter 5, somewhere. There. Yeah, Zakra 5 is 9. The book of Zakra, chapter 5, verse 9. Go ahead. Then. Then lifted up my eyes. Then lifted I up my eyes. I up my eyes. Go ahead. Then lifted I up my eyes and looked, and behold, there came out two women. They came out two women, and the wind was in their wings. And the wind was in their wings. These are women angels. Go ahead. For they had wings mm. like the wings of a stork. A stork. You ever see that the bird stork? Is the stork major? You see that? Yes, like that. Come on. And they lifted up the ether between the earth and the heaven. So, yes, there is women angels. Okay. You see, look at me. My daughter is excited about this thing. <laughs> okay, but what I'm trying to show you is that the angel is sitting right there just recording everything you're doing. So you must be very mindful. Okay. Be very mindful, brothers. Now watch this. I'll give an example, right? Um, because I've already talked to you brothers about this outside, okay, when the sisters are not here. But you brothers, um, I'm not going to bring this up, okay? But here's what I will say. I'll say it like this. Give me that in the first Maccabees real quick. I'm going to be quick with this. First Maccabees, let me show you something what happened in the past, okay? First Maccabees 5 and 16, read that. This book of Maccabees, chapter 5, verse 16. Come on. Now when Judas and the people heard these words, Wait. they assembled a great congregation together. They did what? They assembled a great congregation together. Because right now you don't see that great congregation because your spiritual eyes are closed. You don't see that thing. You know how that movie they said, they, they will come? It's a baseball movie. They said, build it and they will come. I think it was Kevin Costner's movie. Okay, it's a very old movie. Okay? They said, build it and they will come. Listen, keep the commandments, the Lord will send the, the spirits in. Okay? Read. To consult what they should do for their brethren. To consult what they should do for their brethren. So Judas and them, they're having a council. Okay, come on. That were in trouble and, assault, and assaulted of them. Read. Then said, then said Judas unto Simon his brother. Now Judas is saying, he's speaking to Simon his brother, you know. Choose thee out men and go and deliver thy brethren that are in Galilee. Come on. For I and Jonathan, my brother, will go into the country of Galat. So now Judas is saying, listen, um, he says, for I and Jonathan are going to go into Galat. Okay. He says, listen, go and deliver thy brethren that are in Galilee. So he's saying, Simon, Simon is going to deal with the brothers that are in Galilee. But now he's saying, listen, we, me and Jonathan, we're going to go to Galat. Watch the next verse. So he left Joseph, the son of Zacharias. That's you, brothers. Okay. And Azarias. Okay, so you've got Joseph, you've got Azarias, read on. Captains of the people. Go, go ahead. 
with the remnant of the host in Judea to keep it. That's the, that's the congregation. Okay, great. And to him, and, and to whom he gave commandment. And to whom he gave commandment. What did he say? Read. Say, take ye the charge of this people. That's what you brothers don't understand. Remember, Christ died, which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. So you men, you forget that. You see, you still have white Jesus in your head. White Jesus is not crazy. Okay? You men understand that? Great. And see that you make not war against the heathen until the whoa, time. Whoa, whoa, stop right there. And what? And see that you make not war against the heathen uh -huh. until the time that we come again. You see how simple that instruction is? He said, no, no, don't have any problems with the heathens until we return. Arrive here. There's an instruction that you must follow. Just follow it. Don't try to be deep. Don't try to come up with your own ideas. Okay? None of them. That's what Judas is giving the instruction here. Watch what happens next. Read verse 55. Because if you don't see this in example that I'm showing you here, and you cannot draw the parallels, listen, you're not going to make it. I'm telling you straight. We are not going to make it. Okay? Read. First book of Maccabees, chapter 5, verse 55. Go ahead. Now, what time as Judas and Jonathan were in the land of Galat? Now, in the land of Galat. Okay, so the John and I was not here. Read. And Simon, his brother, in Galilee, before Ptolemus. Read. Joseph, the son of Zacharias, uh -huh. and Azarias, uh -huh. captains of the garrison, Read. heard of the valiant acts. They heard. Meaning they heard of the valiant acts, come on. And warlike deeds, which they had done. You see that thing? Because you come here, you say, we also want to be in the seas. We want to teach. We want to be the leaders of Israel. That's the mindset, right? Watch this. Go ahead. Wherefore they said, mm -hmm. let us also get us a name. That's the mindset behind this behavior. Let us also get us a name. Because you don't think that's what you are doing. Yeah, but that's the spirit behind it. Okay, come on. And go fight against the heathen that are around the parties. No, just, just create that mess up those relationships that was there before you. Go ahead. So when they had given charge unto the garrison mm -hmm. that was with them, Read. they went to next to Germany. They went to a Germany. Go ahead. Then came to Go Gaius. Then came Go Gaius. Come on, that's a great now. Read. Then came Go Gaius and his men mm -hmm. out of the city to fight against them. So now remember, what was the instruction? Do not go and fight against the heathen. What did these wicked Negroes do? They did it anyway. Go ahead, watch this. And so it was uh -huh. that Joseph and Azarias were put to flight. They were what? Were put to flight. No, they were rewarded by this. Were put to flight. They were put to flight, right? And pursued unto the borders of Judea. Right? And there were slain that day of the people of Israel, about 2,000 men. You see that thing? Look, look at the judgment. You see how many people got killed because of this? Because these two wicked Negroes wanted to make a name for themselves. They had an idea. You brothers, remember, what was the first thing I said? Many of you when you are right? I said, the worst thing you can do in this truth, they have an idea. That's the worst thing, that's the worst mistake you can have. Don't come with ideas up in here. Follow the blueprint. Okay? Follow the blueprint. Don't have ideas. The, the worst thing you can do in this, just have an idea. Come up with some ideas here. Come up with, some, come, come up with some ideas because, listen, there's safety in counseling. It's better that you see counsel than you do something then you tell me that, no, we are doing this. Or no, we decided to do this after the fact. No, 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 that's not counsel. Don't tell me after the fact that that's not counsel. You are basically saying, by the way, because you see what by the way did? People got killed because of by the way. Read on. Thus was there a great overthrow among the children of Israel. Read. Because they were not obedient unto Judas and his brethren. That's the problem right there. Remember what we read in Ephesians 6. Obedience to the parents. This is a spiritual thing. 
Listen, the most I don't play games. The most I don't play games here. The most I does not play games. I need you to understand that. Okay? That's what says. Give me that in X because let me read it. Okay? Let me throw the spirit out here. Watch this. Give me X. Okay? I'm almost done. X chapter. Yeah, I'm almost done. I know I've been saying that. X 20 verse 28. Watch this. Read it. Okay? X 20 verse 28. Come on, come on. The book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 28. Read. Mm -hmm. Take heed therefore unto yourselves. Mm -hmm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a warning right there. He says, take heed therefore unto yourselves. Read. Mm -hmm. And to all the flock. To all the what? And to all the flock. The what? All the flock. Mm -hmm. The congregation, the flock. Read on. Over the, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. You see that? Read on. To feed the church of God. To feed the church of God with the laws of God. Come on. Which he hath purchased with his own blood. You see that? So Christ died. But I want to show you something heavy with this. Let me show you the spirit that is working here. Keep reading. For I know this, uh, that after my departing, Ray, shall grievous wolves enter in among you, uh, not sparing the flock. Having ideas. Do you see this thing? That's what happened with who? Azariah and Joseph. That's what they did. The apostle Paul, he says, he did this for the space of three years. Three years he warned the people about this. Guess what happened in the, in, after the three years? When you read the book of Acts, you see the evil that wicked Negroes was doing. Read that thing again. The book of Acts, Acts, chapter 20, verse 29. Read. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you. You see that thing? Shall grievous wolves enter in among you. Go ahead. Not sparing the flock. Don't care about the people. Also of your own selves mm. shall men arise. Ray. Speaking perverse things. Come on. To draw away disciples after them. Where is the scriptures in this? I mean, you have the Bible all the time with you. Apply it. It's very simple. Just apply. Okay. Don't don't come up with ideas. Okay, brothers? Okay. This is the flock. I hope you understand it. Okay. Don't offend one of these little ones. You know what is, what is the judgment? The judgment to offend one of the little ones? A stone to be hanged around your neck and you are thrown in the ocean. And the shark will just be sitting there just happy that you came. This is heavy stuff. Go back to First Maccabees 5. Okay, first Maccabees 5 verse 61. First book of Maccabees, chapter 5, verse 61. Go ahead. Thus was there a great overthrow among the children of Israel. Read. Because they were not obedient unto Judas and his brethren. Come on. But thought to do some valiant act. Some ideas. Go ahead. Moreover, these men came not of the seed of those by whose hand deliverance was given unto Israel. Do you brothers understand this to your Read verse 62 again. This book of Maccabees chapter 5, verse 62. Go ahead. Moreover, these men, moreover, these men, Joseph and Azarias, came what? Came not. Came not. Came not. Came not. Read. Came not of the seed. Came not of the seed. Of those, meaning those that's the chosen seed now. When you see the children of Shem, right? You see, like you've got you've got Peleg, you've got Job ten. That you don't see no, but the Lord doesn't discuss the children of Job ten doing what they're against them. So likewise, in Israel there's order. That's why among the tribes, Judah is on the top. Okay? Then you've got Ephraim. You have a few brothers and sisters? Yes, sir. Waking up of the Israel. Who's waking up first? Judah. Okay. The land of Israel, Jerusalem is the favorite of the Lord. There's order throughout. 
One of the reasons why do you think the most high God says you must wake up according to your armies? Why do you think that? Because you really need to think about it. When we came out of Egypt, right? Why do you think the, num- the book of Numbers is about? The book of Numbers is about what? Is about military order. Because we are a military. All over the world, wherever we are scattered, yes, the Negroes are in their wickedness, but that's God's army. Okay? That's God's army right there. So if you don't take heed, you understand when we came out of Egypt, I mean, hold on. We was in camp, right? And we were showing the book, the Israelites. You better saw that, right? You see how we were in Egypt, when I went in the wilderness? Uh, you can't make it up. Leave us 62 again. This book of Maccabees, chapter 5, verse 62. Wait. Moreover, this man came not of the seed of those. Come on. By whose hand deliverance was given unto you. You see, in, in this truth, man, a lot of the times, here's where I've seen what black people do. You see, black people have a thing where when you come into an organization, you're not going to talk, you, you won't tell the white man, but you'll talk among yourselves. Yeah, you know, like the manager, this, you know, the supervisor, that. Am I wrong? No, sir. No, sir. Uh, guess what? In Israel, you have the same mindset too. Because in your mind, you think you can do this. You think, yeah, we can also do that. No, no, you can't. Because look at how, how things were. You know when, when Christ taught the disciples, when he taught the disciples, there are certain things that he let the disciples know. But the rest of the people, he didn't spoke in parables. And when he was among them, face to face, he started to expound, make it plain. If you move with a spirit of, I know too much, me I'm one I'm around you, or there's a lot of stuff that I won't, I won't tell you. I won't reveal nothing in this book. Nothing. I'll just be quiet. I'll just talk about general stuff. Simple precepts. Why? Because you think you are, you are somewhere. The minute you think you are there, uh, then that means that you are in the kingdom already. You, you are in the kingdom. You got it already. You don't need to be taught. Listen, brothers. Men who got put to death. I keep mentioning this, but because you don't see literally bodies dropping neck left, right, and said, you don't see that. But you will. Spiritually, though. That's the worst kind of death, the spiritual one. I've seen men spiritually die in this truth. Okay? And they also thought they knew. Where are they now? You can't draw them now. They are nowhere to be found. And I keep bringing up these experiences over and over for you, men to learn. But it's not sinking in the way. But you can go by the genius that you are. If you are the genius, go ahead, be the genius. Me, I'm okay with that, by the way. Okay? Me, I'm okay with If you are a genius, no problem. Be a genius. Me, I'm going to humble down to what this Bible says. And the Lord will send spirits in when we build this great nation. With or without you. Okay? Understand that thing? You sisters understand that? So you better make sure that you stay in this book. Okay? You brothers too. Because I want you men to grow. All of you. To grow. Because we have a lot of work to do. Okay? Okay. Oh, please. Now, I'm almost done. No, wait, I'm almost done. Okay, Daniel. Where was we? Um, first Maccabees, right? Yeah, I'm going to close it. Uh, first Maccabees. Because it says they shall be hoping with a little help. Um... Give me uh, First Maccabees chapter two, right? First Maccabees two, read verse sixty-six. This book of Maccabees, chapter two, verse sixty-six. Go ahead. As for Judas Maccabees, he had been mighty and strong, even from his youth up. Go ahead. Let him be your captain. Read. And fight the battle of the people. Now watch this. Read chapter three, verse one. This book of Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 1. This is after Malathias died now. Come on. Then his son Judas 
called Maccabees rose up in his stead. Hey. And all his brethren helped him. And what? And all his brethren helped him. No, 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 no. That Negro right there. Go ahead. What? And all his brethren helped him. And all his brethren helped him. You see, that's what the Lord is looking for. Like, I'll give you an example, right? If you, let's say, you know, uh, let's say you have a degree in applied medicine, right? And you come in Islam. The brother is working in finance, is dealing with the finance of Islam. You are the mathematician, right? Or you are the accountant. The Negro spirit, you know what they will do? They will say, I'm the one that's supposed to be in that position. Because I've got a degree in accounting. The right spirit, though, you know what the right spirit will, will do? I need to help this brother in his in that position that the Lord ordained. That's the spirit right there. Because it looks like it just went over. That's the spirit. That's what the, that's the spirit the Lord is looking for. It takes a lot of application of God's laws to do that. It takes a lot of study to do that. You understand? Because when you come with that, you think it's not in the Bible? It is in the Bible. Let me show you. Because the Apostle Paul had to deal with that, with, with that similar situation. Give me that in Galatians 2. Galatians 2 verse 6. I'm going to show you something, right? Watch this. The Apostle Paul had to shut that spirit down very quickly. Read that. The book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 6. Read. Right? But of these who seem to be somewhat. Of these who seem to be somewhat, you think you are something, right? Go ahead. Whatsoever they were. Whatever you were in the world, whether you are an accountant, you are a mathematician, you have a degree, you have a master's, read. Right? It maketh no matter to me. God, the Lord said, I don't give a damn about that. The most said, God says, I don't give a damn about that thing to help with you and your degree. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Go ahead. God accepted no man's person. The Lord said, I don't care about that. Whatever you did in the world, and the Lord said, I don't give a damn about that. The only reputation that the Lord is looking for is what? Your, your reputation when it comes to application of this book. That's what the Lord is looking for. Okay? Come on. For they who seem to be someone. He's repeating it again. For they who seem to be someone, you think you're something. Read. In conference. In conference, meaning when it comes to this truth. Added nothing to me. Listen, added nothing to me. Meaning what? Useless. The Apostle Paul had to deal with this type of spirit in the church. Why? Because you have wicked Negroes coming out in the world, undermining the brothers and sisters that came before them. The Apostle Paul, you know, three quarters of the New Testament. When you read the Apostle Paul, he gave, he gave honor to Phoebe, Sister Phoebe, to Aquila, Priscilla. The Apostle Paul, right? we talk about the Apostle Paul here, from the tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin! Okay. You understand that, right? Yes, okay. I hope you might even understand that thing. Watch this. Um, read verse 2 again. First Maccabees 3 verse 2. First book of Maccabees chapter 3 verse 2. Come on. And all his brethren helped him. And all his brethren helped him. That's what the Lord is looking for. Brothers and sisters, all hands on deck. Okay? No hidden agendas. Read. And so did all they that held with his father. You see that those that fought with his father, they also helped him. Read. And they fought with cheerfulness. No, no, with mammon. With cheerfulness. No, with complaining. With cheerfulness. Because that's what Negroes know how to do. Complain and complain. Okay? You see the sisters laughing. You know what I'm talking about, right? Read again, verse 2. <laughs> First book of Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 2. Right. And all his brethren helped him. Uh, and so did all they that held with his father. Right. And they fought with cheerfulness. Mm. The battle of Israel. That's the spirit the, that's the, that's the spirit the Lord is looking for. They fought with cheerfulness the battle of Islam. Right now we are fighting the spiritual war. Before the physical deliverance, we must fight the spiritual war. Understand that thing. And when they fought, they fought to do what? Now let's keep moving. 
Read chapter chapter four, chapter four and verse thirty-six. First Maccabees four thirty-six. First book of Maccabees chapter four verse thirty-six. Because I know some of you forgot already. Daniel eight verse fourteen says two thousand three hundred days, and then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. What we are reading with Malachi's, what we are reading in Judah Maccabee, that's the process of what the men that the Lord will raise up to cleanse the temple. That's the piece of dedication. Okay, read them. First book of Maccabees, chapter four, verse thirty-six. Come on. Then said, then said Judas and his brethren, Behold, mm -hmm. our enemies are discomfited. You know what they are? They are put to shame. Read. Let us go up to cleanse mm -hmm. and dedicate the sanctuary. You see that? Let us go up to cleanse and dedicate the sanctuary. Jump down to verse forty-one now. First book of Maccabees, chapter four, verse forty-one. Read. Then Judas appointed certain men uh -huh. to fight against those that were in the fortress. Those that were in the fortress is the heathens that Antiochus has brought. Read. Until he had cleansed the sanctuary. Until he had cleansed the sanctuary. So just like what our forefather Nehemiah did, he says, "Year what? What in his hand? Anybody remember? A sword and what else? A brick. A sword and he was putting brick. That's what our forefather Judas is doing." That's what is going on. That's what's going on right here. You understand? While he was building, he was fighting at the same time. That's what we do. Go ahead. So he chose priests mm. of blameless conversation. He chose priests of blameless conversation, meaning those that don't complain. Because not easy, it's just conversation. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Such as a pleasure in the Lord. You see that? That's another thing. That's another character. They had pleasure in God's words. Read on. Who cleansed the sanctuary. Who cleansed the sanctuary, come on. And be out the defiled stone. Because they brought unclean things up in the rain. Into an unclean place. Into an unclean place. Rain. And when, as they consulted what to do with the altar of the offering, mm -hmm. which was profane. Which was profane. That means the Levites were not doing their jobs. No more. That's why Onias the third, he wanted to be high priest, and he paid Antiochus to get it. Okay, jump down to verse 52. First book of Maccabees, chapter 4, verse 52. Come on. Now on the 5 and 12th day, and 20th day of the ninth month, mm -hmm. which is called the month Kassim. That's where we are, right? In the 140 and 8th year, mm -hmm. they rose up times in the morning. Right? And offered sacrifice according to the law mm -hmm. upon the new altar of burnt offerings, right. which they had made. Because now they cleanse the sanctuary, they're setting up, they're setting things up now. The Levites are helping them to set things in order so we can sacrifice again. So the Lord can what? The Lord can be on our side. Nobody wants them. Oh, yeah, no, there's so so much enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Look at what time and what day the heathen have profaned it. Right. Even in that it was dedicated with songs mm. and scissors uh. and harps uh. and symbols. Come on. And that is that's it on there. Jump down to verse 59. This book of Maccabees, chapter 4, verse 59. But they all praise to the most high. The sisters did the decorations. Let's give the sisters a hand, you see. All praises to the most high. All praises to the Lord this day. Mm. Sisters are stepping up here. Yeah. Verse 59, come on. First book of Maccabees, chapter 4, verse 59. Read. Moreover, Judas and his brethren, with the whole congregation of Israel, uh, read. that the days of the dedication of the altar should be kept in their season read. from year to year by the space of eight days. Go ahead. From the five and twentieth day of the month casting, uh -huh. with mirth and gladness. You see that thing? We must enjoy ourselves. First Maccabees chapter, second Maccabees one, verse eighteen. Second Maccabees one eighteen. Read it. Second book of Maccabees, chapter one, verse eighteen. Come on. Therefore, whereas we are now purposed to keep the purification of the temple, come on, upon the five and twentieth day of the month casting, right. we thought it necessary to certify you thereof, come on, that ye also may keep it. that you what? That ye also might keep that you also must keep it, come on, 
as the feast of the tabernacles. As the feast of the tabernacles. Now you know how to observe the feast of the tabernacles, right? Yes, so, yes, so is as as the feast of the tabernacles. So we're supposed to observe the feast of dedication just like we observe the feast of tabernacles. Make sense? Yes, sir. Does it? In terms of food, sir. Oh yes. Okay. No, read really again so it's it sincere. Second book of Maccabees, chapter one, verse eighteen. You sisters are, are you sisters seeing that? Sister Elias, do you see that? Okay, read the verse again. She's not getting it. The second book of Maccabees. Sister Elias, you must help me. Okay, read that again. The second book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 18. Come on. Therefore, whereas we are now purposed to keep the purification of the temple Read. from the 5th and 20th day of the month casting, Read. we thought it necessary to certify you thereof Come on. that ye might, oh, might keep it. That ye might keep it. So they are commanding us to keep the feast of the dedication, right? Okay, come on. That ye also might keep it uh, as what? As what? As just like. As come on, as the feast of the tabernacles, as the feast of the tabernacles. So you can read about that in Leviticus the twenty third chapter, right? And of the fire, and which was given us when ne 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 Nehemiah, Nehemiah, okay, come on, when Nehemiah offered sacrifice, and after that he had built the temple right? and the altar. So after our forefathers during the time of the Persian Empire. After the temple was done, being repaired, the walls and so forth, they dedicated the temple. Okay. And remember, during the time of Nehemiah, that was the first time they observed the Feast of Tabernacles the right way. Because before then, when was the last time it was done the right way? Anybody remember? Josiah's. No, not under Josiah's. Josiah's kept the puzzle. And it was glorious, right? So, anybody remember? Since Joshua. Yeah? Anybody remember that? Let's read that. So that means during the time of King Solomon, King David, the Feast of Tabernacle wasn't kept like that. Okay? This is some heavy stuff. Beautiful history, by the way. Okay? Nehemiah 8. I think it's Nehemiah 8, huh? Yeah, Nehemiah 814. Watch this. You know what? Yeah, read 14, then we're gonna jump. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 14. Come on. And they found written in the law, mm. which the Lord had commanded by Moses. Come on. That the children of Israel should dwell in boots mm -hmm. in the feast of the seventh month. Now you also another thing is, is they found written in the law. That means the Bibles were not being read. The scriptures were not being applied. They found it. You know when you've lost and found? That's how bad it was. So what's the difference between then and now? Because then you go to church all the time, but you never open this book. <laughs> now, as the scriptures are coming out, you know that you are Israel. Now you're starting to find it in the book. Okay. As it is written, how to apply it. Make sense? Yes, sir. Go ahead. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 14. Verse 15, come on. Verse 15. And that they should publish and proclaim in all their cities mm -hmm. and in Jerusalem. Say, right. Go forth unto the mount and fetch olive branches and pine trees and myrtle branches and palm branches and branches of thick trees to make boots as it is written. Go ahead. So the people went forth and brought them mm -hmm. and made themselves boots. Everyone upon the roof of his house. Everyone upon the roof of his house, letting you know we had flat roofs. This thing of the triangular roofs, that's not our thing. Go ahead. <laughs> and in their courts, and in the courts of the house of God, right. and in the street of the water gate, Come on. and in the street of the gate of Ephraim. Now watch this, verse 17. And all the congregation of them that will come again out of the captivity made boots. Out of the captivity, we made boots, right? Come on. And sat under the boots. Right. 
For since the days of Joshua, uh -huh. the son of Nun. You see that? Since the days of Joshua, the son of Nun. Read. And to that day uh -huh. had not the children of Israel done so. You see that? So, King Solomon, during the time of King Solomon, in all his wisdom, we didn't keep the feast of the tabernacles like this. You understand? So, letting you know that the prophets before is, is also showing you what? The water levels kept going up by the prophets. Make sense? Yes, sir. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. So, which means, okay, during the time of King Solomon, right? We didn't keep the past, we didn't keep the Feast of Tabernacles the way, right? As Nehemiah taught, right? During the time of King David, we didn't do it. Although we, we kept, you know, the, the, the feast, it's like, it's like you keep the Feast of Tabernacles. I remember, I'll give an example with us. When we first started, right, the way we kept the Feast of Tabernacles, we would read it in the scriptures, but it's like the Lord was to close your eyes once you're supposed to make boots. Me, I didn't see that. Until as time went by, the Lord started to open the spirit and say, wait a minute, boots. You see that? I remember when, when, when we, we would observe the Feast of Tabernacles, we would go to the zoo. <laughs> we went to the zoo to observe the Feast of Tabernacles. It sounds foreign, right? Yes. <laughs> we went to the zoo to observe that. You understand? So over time, the Lord would put, would open up the scriptures more for the prophets that came after. You understand? Yes. So which means that during the time of, um, you know, after Joshua, King David, the prophet Samuel, so on and so forth, we didn't keep the feast of tabernacle like this. We didn't do any boots. We didn't do none of that. So but during the time of Nehemiah and Ezra, the Lord said, okay, I'm going to open your spirit now to keep it the right way. So that means generations later, the Lord started to write, to raise up the understanding, the water level started to go up. Make sense now? Yes, sir. Okay. Because I remember when the, I, I always talk about it, the, the, the Sabbath. I mean, I used to walk Distances for the salmon. You understand? We didn't bath with hot water. Because they don't cook nothing. If you just go to the shower, go take. Okay? Because the scriptures didn't open at that point. You understand? Now, you can boil because you know the steaming part goes into what? For cooking, for eating, drinking. You can't do that. But you're supposed to what? You're supposed not to be walking around here being an unclean demon. Like, what the hell is this? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, praise to the most high for that thing. You know? Oh, okay. praise to the Lord for that thing. Okay. Um, yes, as the Feast of Tabernacles. Give me John 10 22, then we'll close it. <coughs> so, our forefathers kept the Feast of Tabernacles. I mean, he has Feast of Dedication as the Feast of Tabernacles. And ju during the time, because this is during the time of the Greeks, during the time of Christ, guess what? Christ did it the same. He also observed it because he was, he was here at the Apocrypha. Okay, read it. The book of John, chapter 10, verse 22. Go ahead. And it was at Jerusalem, the Feast of the Dedication, and it was winter. You know, even the weather is on point. Oh, well, it's not winter here on the outside in the Eastern Hemisphere, but it is winter in the Western Hemisphere, okay? Because that's where major deliverance is going to come from, okay? Read. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. So Christ observed the Feast of the Dedication. You see that thing right there? Okay, I'm going to end the class right there because, you know what? Um, the spiritual understanding of this is that, yes, we are cleansing the temple, the physical temple, that's why we, we had to, the Greeks had the Greeks had defiled it, right? So, now, you know what, let me just touch on that. First Peter 2 verse 5, real quick. First Peter 2 verse 5. Mm 
Let's be restored as fire. Let's get that real quick. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 5. Come on. And spared not the old world. No, 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 no. First Peter's 2. Not second place. First Peter's 2, verse 5. Who is that? Okay, come on. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 5. Go ahead. Ye also, as lively stones, as lively stones, really, are built up a spiritual house. So now we are building up this spiritual house now. Okay, come on. And holy priesthood. A holy priesthood, really, to offer up spiritual sacrifices uh -huh. acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So now, the temple that must be cleansed now, just like our forefathers did it back then physically, we must cleanse our spiritual temples. Now that's a heavy one, man, isn't it? That's not an easy job, right? That's not easy. You understand? I'll give you an example. Give me Galatians 5.19. This is the field that exists in all of us, which must be patched out. Okay? Read it. Galatians 5, verse 19. The book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 19. Come on. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Read. Adultery. Uh -huh. Fornication. Come on. Uncleanness. Mm. Lasciviousness. Read. These are all sexual sins. Read. Idolatry. Come on, like now our, our people are celebrating Christmas. Right? Witchcraft. Mm. Hatred. Come on. Bearing. Right. Emulation. Come on. Wrath. Right. Strife. Mm. Sedition. Come on. Heresies. Right. Envies. Mm. Murders. Drunkenness. Come on. Rebellion. That goes into piling and all that. Right? Rebellions. Right. And such like. Mm. Of the which I tell you before. Come on. As I have also told you in the past, really? that they which do such things, that they which do such things, what things? The things that he's reading, the, the things that he just listed, verse 19 and 20, okay, and 21, some of them, come on. Shall not, shall what? Shall not, shall not, shall not, come on. Inherit the kingdom of God. Will not inherit the kingdom of God. So these things that you see here, these are the filth. This, this is the filth of the flesh. This is what's plaguing our minds, this thing right here. And this is the hardest to deal with. Because it's easy to put on fringes. It's easy to say, okay, I'm an Israelite, I must grow my beard. It's easy. Because these are outside things. You understand? But it's a good step to show the Lord that you are about this. You understand? Sisters putting on dresses now and so forth. Oh, please, fringes on. Okay? So that is a good step. But these things, these ones, they take time to get rid of. Okay, these are not easy. And these ones, these ones right here, you know where, where you want to see them? These, they, because you can have these and think, no, I, uh, you can have these and say, okay, I'm applying, I'm getting rid of them, right? You know, you know when you're going to start to see if really you did not really get rid of it? Congregational trials. Yeah. The trials in the congregation. Now how you, how you interact with your brethren, your sisters. That's how they're going to start to pop up and say, hey, I need to deal with that. You, you see that thing? Because these things, they will pop up. You know why? The most time must purge these things from us. The Lord has to do that. And these things are going to happen. Your congregational trials, they must happen. Your marital trials, because you just got married, the trial is coming, by the way. Okay? You must prepare yourself for that. The trial might come on him, the trial might come on you. But if it comes on him, you have to stand for the gospel and help him. And the trial might come on you, you have to stand for the gospel and help him. Okay? You have to. You have to stay in this. That's the only way. Okay, so your personal, your congregational, your marital trials. You can't escape those, by the way. It's inevitable. <laughs> you can't. There's no if or maybe about it. It will happen. You, so your job is to, you must prepare for that thing. That's why you have to be in this. Okay? So, this is what we are reading here. Give me that in Colossians 3 verse 5. This is what the Apostle Paul said about that. The 
the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 5. Read. Mortify therefore your members uh -huh. which are upon the earth. Come on. Fornication. Mortify means dead. End. Dead. End. Come on. Fornication. Read. And clean. Read. Inordinate affection. Come on. Evil concupiscence. You can go to YouTube about that. Go ahead. And covetousness. Uh -huh. Which is idolatry. You see that? So these are the members that we must mortify. The Apostle Paul is giving you a whole list of them. You understand? Go ahead, next verse. For which things say mm -hmm. the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. You see that? So these are things that that's how we cleanse the temple. Now there's a spiritual thing now. All these things that we read in Galatians 5, those are all the works of the flesh. That's what we must cleanse today now. That's the temple we must cleanse. Okay, watch this. Give me 1 Corinthians 3.16. We read this one all the time. But I want you to look at it differently this day. Okay, watch this. This book of Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 16. Go ahead. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? We are the temple of the Lord. Come on. And that the Spirit of God in you. The Spirit of the Lord dwells in us. That's why we offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Read. If any man defile the temple of God. Defile the temple of God with what? What we read in Galatians 5. What we read in Colossians 3. Read. Him shall God destroy. Him shall God destroy. Okay. So now, what we are reading here, give me First Kings chapter 6 and 1. The book of 1 Kings, chapter 6, verse 1. I'm going to show you something of this verse right here. This is when Solomon was constructing the temple. 1 book of Kings, chapter 6, verse 1. Read. And it came to pass Read. in the 480th year. Read. After the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt. Come on. In the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel. Mm -hmm. In the month Ziv, which is the second month. In the month Ziv, which is the second month, that he began to build the house of the Lord. So after so 480 years after we came out of Egypt, that's when we began to build. 480 years. That's some heavy stuff. That's a huge history. Because Joshua, Judges, hmm? they're also history. Okay. Read. And the house which King Solomon built for the Lord, the length thereof was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof twenty cubits. Now watch this. Keep going. And the height thereof thirty cubits. Mm -hmm. And the perch and the porch before the temple of the house, twenty cubits was the length thereof. So he's giving you the dimensions of the house. Watch this. Give me. Jump down to verse. Read verse twenty-one. I want you to see this thing. Read. First book of Kings, chapter 6, verse 21. Come on. So Solomon overlaid the house within with pure gold. You see that? So the temple was overlaid with gold. Pure gold. Go ahead. And he made a partition mm -hmm. by the chains of gold. By the chains of gold. Come on. Before the oracle. Read. And he overlaid it with gold. So now everything is overlaid with gold. Read on. And the whole house he overlaid with gold. The whole house was overlaid with gold. Read. Until he had finished all the house. Mm. Also the whole altar that mm. was by the oracle he overlaid with gold. Now, what? That is why I'm reading this. Based on what we read in 1 Corinthians is this. This was the physical temple, right? Okay. What we read in 1 Corinthians, that's the spiritual temple. You see how the, the physical temple was? Was overlaid with gold. Gold is a precious metal. Gold is more it, gold is, 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 is more value than diamonds. It has more value than bronze and silver. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah, chapter 18, verse 12. Isaiah 18, verse 12. The book of Isaiah, chapter 13, verse 12. Come on. How art thou fallen? No, no. 13, 18, verse 12, not 14. Excuse me, sir. 
The book of Isaiah chapter 13 verse 12. Come on. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. You hear what the Bible is saying? What did the Lord say we'll do? I will make a man more precious than fine gold. The Lord says he's going to make a man more precious than fine gold. Because what is the Lord telling? The Lord is letting you know you already the gold. You gold already. But it's, it's, in, it's, in, it's in its raw form. What needs to happen to this gold? It must be put through the fire. So the Lord can release all the impurities out of it. That's how you cleanse the temple. The temple is gold overlaid with gold, but it is raw. You need to melt this thing and get rid of the tin in it, the unwanted stuff. Then the Lord will receive you. Okay? Come on. Even a man than the golden weight of Ophir. Because Ophir had the best gold on earth. So, this spiritual temple, that's how we cleanse it now. We offer up spiritual sacrifices. So guess what we do? We must purge all these evils. Envy, hatred, arguments, unnecessary arguments. The Lord says we must do that. And that right there, that's how, that, that, that right there does the trial. Okay? We must look like that gold that we're reading about, that temple that we read about in First Kings. That's what the Lord is teaching us right there. And that's not easy to do. That's why we constantly have to be working together. We have to apply ourselves on a daily basis. Don't be skipping days. Say, no, I know I read that Bible tomorrow. You don't have tomorrow. Ah, you know, like maybe two days, yeah, Ish, I'm still, no. Apply it. That's how the Lord is going to purge us from all this filthiness that we're in. Okay, I'm going to end the class right there. All praises to the most high. God, all praises. Let's break bread, okay? Let's break bread. So sisters, you might want to get yourself ready with this. All right. Okay, let's make sure that everybody has bread and wine. Oh, praise you, the most high. Oh, praise you. Oh, praise you, the Lord. Let's give the most high hand for that. Okay, everybody got bread and wine, right? Yes, sir. Okay, all praises to the most high. Okay, let's break bread in the honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that you also may receive life this day. The first book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in the remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup which he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Let's give the most.